basketball on We're Facebook. live on YouTube? Follow the team on okay. Twitter at ODUMBB and with hashtag ODUMBB for all the latest Monarch basketball information. ODU Athletics and ODU Sports Properties would like to thank our Team Monarch corporate partners. Pepsi, the official right. soft drink of ODU what? Athletics. Pepsi, refresh everything. Cox Communications. With the new Contour Sports app from Cox, you can watch a game live and track multiple games at once, all right there on your TV. The Virginia Lottery. Where game? Liberty Tax Service. Liberty Tax. Tax questions? We've got answers. And Atlantic Bay Mortgage Group. Atlantic Bay. 20 years of lending peace of mind. Sure we are. Monarch fans, join us on I know like a 30 second delay. 27th when the Monarchs take down Maryland Eastern Shore. The game will tip off at 7 p.m. right here at the tail. Check on the computer. But you're live over uh, Yeah, I know we're live on speaker right now, but I mean. Big Blue's Kids Club is back yeah. for its second year. Big Blue case. wants all Monarch fans 13 and under to join. Membership for the 2017-18 season is now open and is only $20 with great benefits, including a Big Blue yeah. Beach Town, yeah, okay. Charlie well, uh, Piggy Bank, birthday card for Big Blue, and sure. multiple opportunities for free kids tickets. Members can also be part of family under this? Oh, yeah, you couldn't change the thing. Register today for the Big Blue Kids Club at odusports.com slash kids club. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it's my pleasure to... You are listening to WODU, ODU uh, source for radio and television. Check us out okay. on Spreaker, tune in, iHeartRadio, 89.3 FM and channel 70-1 on campus for some of the best programming from students right here at ODU. Thank huh? you for listening to the Monarch Source for College Radio, WODU. Okay, yeah, we're live, so you can start talking. I'm trying to, like, promote right now. Because I don't know how to put out the... Are you promoting for YouTube? Yeah, because I don't know how I don't know how to promote for the freaker, to be honest with you. So, but we, we're, we are live on the radio. <laughs> okay. Back on YouTube? On YouTube? Yeah. Oh, well, we'd like to welcome everybody to the pregame show for ODU basketball. They prepared to open their season against Towson this evening. So this is their season opener. They have a, um, almost a brand new team. They have a few people back. But the big keys, um, and I'm, my bad, let me introduce myself first. I'm Mel Styles. I'm here with my best host ever. Grayson McKinney. And so, Grayson, let's just, let's just break this down, right? It's their season opener, and they have 
they have a lot of their, their core coming back. So just tell me a little about what you feel as the good core that's coming back this season. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the core coming back. Um, back court is keeping in touch with um, uh, Amir Kaver and BJ Stipp. Our uh, fun core, we still have uh, Brandon Stipp coming back. We saw a lot of good production out of them last year. So I think they're going to bring a really good leadership role into this season and to kind of help move along these young guys we have to fit into the rotation. And I'm liking a lot of the young guys that they have. And, I mean, they still have Xavier Green coming back. And I, I like him. I mean, just seeing what he did in the little pregame, looked like he took an extra step from where he was last year to this year. And they have added Hewitt on uh, the freshman, and they also added Marquise Godwin as well. Both pure shooters from their high school. So it's really interesting to see what how they're going to play out here this evening. Definitely. And last year, we had... Um, in the front court, we had Denzel Williams and, uh, oh, not Denzel Williams, we had um, Zoran Tali. And now we get to see uh, more, more guys like Trey Porter and Aaron Carter kind of go into a bigger role on this basketball team. So do you think that this is gonna this is a season that they have a high expectation? I mean, this is not a bad team that you're looking at on the floor here. And the, the concerning that the conference that they're in, do you believe that this is a conference that they could win? Uh, definitely. I mean, there are some good teams in this conference. We look at teams like Middle Tennessee, who won it last year, who I think were projected number one this year. But I think ODU was projected number four in the CUSA, and they are bringing back a lot of guys who with good experience from last year and some of the additions that they've had. Uh, you mentioned Godwin, so I think this team does has expectations, but got to go out and play. So I mean, so let's talk about Towson a little bit. So I don't know how much you know about Towson, but last year they played a lot of power ball. They got into the paint, and then they played inside out. So they're going to want to dominate you inside the paint. They want to kick the ball out and save their open three. Now the biggest addition that they have this season is that their freshman Travis Ingram from this Hampton Road area from Northam High School. Travis is a known champion. He's won four state championships at Norfolk. So now being on the college stage, I mean, I feel like this is something that he's prepared for. I felt like he was already a man coming in to college. So, I mean, I feel like if he, if he, let's see if he gets the playing time. And if he does, I feel like he's going to make a big impact in this game. Yeah, this is a team last year that won 20 games. Um, they played ODU last year, and ODU only won 60 to 58. So they played ODU close last year. They're definitely heading in the right direction. And I think this team is going to, Give ADA a good game tonight for their season opener as well. Most definitely, and this being this being their season opener, you have to you have to, you have to assume that they're going to come out and play, right? So you're home, and I know they have big expectations. Oh, I didn't see you. But um, so you have to assume that they have big expectations. This being their season, their season opener, this is not this is not a game that you want to drop early in the season like this, you know. Especially you assume Coach Jones. He's gonna have his guys ready tonight. They've been they've been practicing all season in their new in their new sports um the Mitchum, their new sports complex. So they've been practicing there all off season. So I mean you get a complex like that and you put the the school puts money behind you like that, you have to assume that they wanna win, they wanna win now. Definitely. Um, I think this is a team that wants to win now they have the guys to do it. Going back to Towson, this is a Towson team that's returning five by five starters from last year. So they also kept their core. I think they're bringing back nine total guys from their team last year. So not much change on Towson's side. So, what do you step back on the court to finish warming up? I mean, that's this is an athletic team, you know. It, it's not like these guys are athletic as well. I mean, Brandon and even with um, Trey Porter, these guys are athletic. These are not stiff guys that you're going to get down in the paint. They're going to move around. They can dribble. They can handle the ball. So it's interesting to see what they're going to do. Definitely, and you mentioned the addition of the shooters that we have on this team now. That's kind of something we missed last year. We weren't the best shooting basketball team, but now when we have good shooters, it'll splash the floor and either allow the bigs to kick out for a pass or open it up inside. So, we'd like to thank everybody for tuning in with us. This is the first season for us as well. This is my first season here on the radio for WOTU for a basketball season and Grayson's as well. So if you don't know it from the football season, so now we're in the basketball season, and we have big expectations for ourselves. Isn't that right, Grace? Absolutely, definitely. So we definitely, we definitely have it for you guys tuning in. I mean, we're going to do everything we can on our end. I just ask you guys to stick with us, and we'll be right back. We're going to go to commercial break. Naya. 
I'm a criminal justice and political science major from Hampton, Virginia. My name, My name is Zach. Zach. I'm a junior, junior studying business administration from Warrington, Virginia, Virginia. And, we're and we're out about in Norfolk, showing, showing you the Hampton Roads area. Right now, we're in front of the Chrysler Museum of Art. Believe, Believe me, there's plenty, plenty of things to do here, here in Norfolk and in the Hampton Roads area. area. Oh, oh, absolutely. In my, in my free time, time, I like to go out and check out the Hawkwood Creek Wildlife Park and take a hike, or maybe go to the boardwalk down at Virginia Beach, and go down to the Gent area and check out the movie The Narrow. Or you can go see the concert at the Norva. But for me, I like to go shopping, so I'll visit the various malls, maybe MacArthur or Granby Street. And on a beautiful day like today, I like to go out and check out the Norfolk Zoo, because ODU students get in for free. Or maybe head out to Bush Gardens in the Colonial Williamsburg area. Yeah, I like Jamestown, New York Town. So we hope, we hope to see you around. around. Thank you for stopping by. that gets me where I, where I come from, from. Where, I'm where I'm heading, heading. To, put to put my experience into action, into action. Turn, turn my skills into enterprise, enterprise. innovate, to, to learn on my terms, terms. To, to develop my own passions, encouraged, encouraged by my faculty, faculty. supported by my campus, make, make a difference in the world, world. create, create my, my own traditions. traditions. Old Dominion University, University. your future success begins here. Discovering new frontiers. World class scientists making life saving discoveries. Like using bioelectrics to heal wounds and treat cancers. We are Old Dominion University. Building our region as a center of research innovation. Because Hampton Rose is our pride. Old Dominion University. Idea fusion. Join us. I was, I was looking for a program, program that, that I felt promoted inclusivity. The faculty has been very available. I get, I get a lot of different perspectives on my writing. I feel like I've made real progress. I've learned, I've learned how to get out of my own way. way. The story doesn't change, but the way you tell it does. So we'd like to welcome everybody back. We'd like to welcome everybody back to the WODU game show, Iron Mellow Styles, and I'm here with Grayson. So Grayson, just, and we'd like to thank our production manager, Austin, for joining the set with us today. We couldn't do it without him. So Grayson, just give me, just give me some of the stats about what we expect tonight from these teams. Um, for ODU, uh, you've mentioned the addition of the shooters we have, so having looked at ODU to up their shooting percentage, especially from last year. Um, with the core guys, they have a comfortable starting five. I think they're going to go with. So I look for the starters on ODU side to give a lot of production. And this ODU is a big team. We look at Brandon Stith starting forward, 6'7", Trey Porter at 6'10". Um, so I, th I think ODU should use their size for their advantage. And just looking at how the crowd is playing out so far, it looking like the tent's going to fill up tonight. It looks like they're going to have a good home crowd tonight. Definitely. I mean, a season opener. Fans are excited. Team's excited. I'm excited. Most definitely. So it's just, it just, it just good for a basketball season to be back. I mean, I'm happy for it. I mean, I love football. But being inside and, you know, not having to worry about the weather and Everything's in your favor when you're inside, right? So I know, I know the players are happy to be back on the court, and I know I'm happy to be out here as well. So I'm, I mean, there's, there's a few new faces on this team. I, mean, I, I can't even – I don't know all of them, to be honest with you. How many – I know they added – so between Hewitt, Godwin. I mean, there's a couple freshmen on this team. There's definitely a couple of freshmen. On, there's definitely a couple of freshmen to make a major impact on this team. And at the freshman, Palavios out of uh, Greece. Yes. So let me tell you about. Oh, I, I don't want to butcher his name, but what? How do how do I say that? It looks like Alfis Palavios. Alfis Palavios from Greece. He's in one of my classes actually. So 
So, I mean, he's and from what from what I can gather, he's a he's a very smart guy. So she's right there. So she's a very smart guy. So you know, and that, I mean, basketball, you want you want your brightest minds on the court. Definitely. Especially, I think he's going to be a two way player. I think he's he's not going to be stuck in one position. He's a, I, I want to say he's more like a stretch three. If I want anything, I feel like he can play the two if they go big. So uh, that's interesting to see if, if see if they're going to play him tonight. I mean, I know they have their rotation. I don't know if he's in that. So I just want to see how the rotation is going to differ with the guys that they lost last year. This is Palabios right here. So I mean, you see, uh, that's that's a stretch. That's a stretch three. Yeah, he's listed at six six. Yeah, so that's definitely he's a, he's a, he's just stretch three. He can also play the two. So I just want to really see how Coach Jones all takes his rotation. We know we know those big name guys. We know BJ. We know Brandon. We know Amon Carver. We know these guys. So I want to see what Coach Jones is going to do just to keep a. T- I don't know how deep he's going to go into his rotation exactly. I mean, nine nine would be low, you know. But I mean, if he if he feels like he only has nine guys that he can pull on the floor every night and contribute, your nine guys. But the good thing is it's a long season, so you have time to develop those things and to see that you know, like maybe a guy that might not show up tonight might show up next week or the next game, you know. And you can finally get that rotation going. So it's early season, but tonight is definitely going to show what this team has and what they're going to put on the court. Exactly, and I am anxious to see what Xavier Green brings to the floor. He's a um, redshirt freshman, so we haven't seen him play yet, and just. Based off of what I've seen in warm-ups, he is, uh, he's hit a lot of shots. He's had a very athletic uh, dunks. He's jumping out of the gym right now. So I'm anxious to see how he plays on the floor, how big of a rotation he's had. Uh, I think he's excited to get out of there. I mean, a lot of Heather Rose guys. Um, Xavier was from, he was at Williamsburg Christian Academy, uh, what, 45 minutes away. Marquise Guy was right over the water. He came from Hampton. So, I mean, these are guys that they're from here. So, you know, so it, 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 they shouldn't feel uncomfortable that much, only that they're on a bigger stage. Exactly. I mean, I'm really happy looking at the crowd right now. I mean, we were here for the girls' game, and, I mean, it wasn't even the stadium, the, the test night before, and it just seems like people are just pouring in to watch this game tonight. And we are uh, a little over 13 minutes away from tip-off right now. All right, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us, and we're going to go to a little music. And we'd like to, you guys come, we'll be right back to give you more of tip-off, before tip-off between ODU and Towson. I 
in the wet rain. Gucci gang, 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 All right, we'd like to welcome you guys back to the ODU First Thompson Tip-Off Show. I'm Ramel Stiles, I'm here with... Grayson McKinney. All right, Grayson, so this, what, what are we about to dive into? What, what are the big takes from, what are the big takes from tonight's game? Um, interesting to see how, uh, we've talked about kind of the new faces we've seen alongside this core that we saw from last year, so it'll be interesting to see how ODU kind of gets going, what rotations Jeff Jones wants to put in the game, and how deep he's going to go into his bench. Because when you're looking at this roster, there's a lot of options he can go, playing bigger, playing smaller. So I'm just I'm anxious to see what Coach Jones does, what his rotations are, how deep he goes into his bench, and how ODU plays uh, a different units that we haven't seen before. And I'm looking at I'm looking at Tyson's roster, and they're a young team. I mean, they have what one, two, three, four, five, five seniors. But they're all guards. You can't start five guards. So it's inter- I mean, this is going to be a young team. So it's interesting. It's going to be definitely be an interesting matchup tonight. I mean, they're big. I, I, w- I really want to see. I really want to see who um, Coach Gary puts on the floor for the Tigers tonight. I mean, all his guys. All his guys seem. His tallest guy is six eight, two four, six eight, six seven. So I mean, ODU definitely has the height advantage. Clearly, I mean, between what Brandon. I mean, Brandon and Trey Porter, so I definitely want to see, I definitely want to see what, what it's going to be like tonight. Definitely, and depending on if ODU wants to go big, they have the size advantage. You mentioned Brandon and Porter. They also have Aaron Carver listed at 6'7". Uh, Vassar also listed at 6'7". So ODU has a size advantage, but I think Tyson's is going to try to really speed up the game because they do have all those guards, and they're returning four of their five starters from last year. So you have to expect that Tyson's is going to try to push the ball. They're the younger team, they're the smaller team, so you assume they're already faster. So they're going to try to push the ball. So don't be surprised if you see Coach Jones go to that smaller lineup early. Maybe later on in the game, you might want to see him. He might want to pound it inside to those bigs. But I think early, depending on how Towson comes out, they might want to try to match up with the size. And it might be just a back and forth game. We might have a good highlight game on our hands tonight. Definitely. We're getting to be under eight minutes until tip off. I mean, this is, a, this is a really big game for ODU. I mean, there's an expectation when you play ODU men's basketball. There's excitement. I mean, we can go, we can go through the names. We can go through Trent Freeman, Kent Bazemore. I mean, ODU has, a, ODU has an expectation when it, to, when it comes to men's basketball. You know? So, like, they come in, they show up. Last year, they, they might not have had the best season. But you know what? Their expectation still becomes high. Coach Jones is still here. A lot of the core guys are still here. So you have to expect that. You have to expect, you know? We expect this. I know I know this team expects. I mean, and it's not, they don't play in a conference that there's no Duke in this conference. There's no North Carolina in this conference. There's none of those powerhouse teams. It's an open conference. And so you have to, if you're ODU, you have to say, why not us? Why can't this be our year? The roster is there. They added the addition they needed. Well, they, they were four shooters last year. They added probably the two best shooters in the area. I think Marquise might have been one of the best shooters in the nation. And that's and maybe I'm biased. I saw Marquise all of last year. And I'm telling you, he can shoot. I saw him in one of his playoff games. I mean, he had he had six he had six threes in the first half. The kid can shoot. So you add that with what they were missing last year. This team is a contender. Definitely. Uh, last year, the, the biggest thing this team was missing last year were the shooters. Uh, I think they shot around 30%, under 30% from three most of the season. But with those additions of shooting, it really can change the game and open up an offense. And I don't believe they're lacking leadership. I don't. I know they miss, I know you lose a Jordan. You lose some of those guys. But, I mean, BJ's still here. Lee, he's definitely going to step up and be a big leader. Brandon's definitely going to step up and be a big leader. Amon Carver definitely going to step up and be a big leader. So I'm not, I wouldn't be like, what is missing? What is missing from this ODU team? We have yet to see because they have yet to step on the court. But from the eye test, 
they pass everything to me. Jason. Definitely, and these the seniors on this team are guys who actually played with Jordan Maker, who played with Trey Freeman, so they have that experience with the leader, and I think they're ready to step up. We saw Ahmad Caver kind of step up and be the one of the uh, starting guards in the team behind Jordan, so he has the experience. Both of the Stith brothers have the starting experience. So this is a core that is coming back from last year with a lot of new additions that I think will fit in nicely. I'm just really excited. I mean, how far are we from Everton? We're about five minutes away from tip-off. So, I mean, we'll be back. We're going to go, you know, we got to pay some commercials to pay some bills. You know if that's taking or not? Uh, yes, that was a photographer sitting here. Yes, sir. So, we'll be back. We got to go pay some bills. Iron Mellow Styles, and I'm here with my great host. Grayson McKinney. And this is WOD Sports. I felt promoted inclusivity. The faculty has been very available. I get a lot of different perspectives on my writing. I feel like I made real progress. I've learned how to get out of my own way. The story doesn't change, but the way you tell it does.
write anything on your computer, you need to get Grammarly. I write pretty much all day, every day, and Grammarly makes my writing. Hello, hello, hello. We'd like to welcome you guys back to the WODU tip-off show. I don't know, Styles, I'm here with Grayson McKinney. All right, we're about to tip off here in a little bit. So you guys want to bear with us. I believe they're going to do the national anthem and things along those roles. So just stick with us for a little bit. Welcome to the Ted Johnson Convocation Center on the beautiful campus of Old Dominion University. And I do envision the New York Times game sponsored by domestic fuels. Tonight's game features a matchup between the Towson Tigers against their Old Dominion University Monarchs. Sing it, Grayson. I want to sing. That was a fantastic singing of the national anthem by that chorus. Oh, okay. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. So here we go with the starting lineups. Interesting to see who they're going to put in their starting lineups. I'm. So, okay, so it looks like they're going with that 6 9 lineup. 6 9 being the top player. So let's see who ODU starts with on their lineup tonight.
But I mean, also Rip Grayson, I mean, they're already, they're already taller. Yeah, they're so, and Trey Porter already coming out at 6'10". So it looks like we're going to start with that big lineup. So, assume that, assume, look, look for the target in the paint early. Definitely. Look for them to take that size advantage and get those fouls. And that means, are you going to have to hit those free throws? Free throws is something that, again, we struggled with last year on the shooting front. But, I mean, they've had a hard new summer to do it, to go over it, make sure they hit those. I mean, man, this is a dangerous team. This is real dangerous. I'm glad, happy to see BJ and I have a role after Jordan gone, so now it's time for him to step up. This is, I believe, this is his team. I love this backcourt with uh, Amon Kaver and BJ Stiff. I mean, it really might be one of the most dangerous backcourts in this conference. And are you also going with uh, Randy Haynes starting at the other guard? He's gonna, um, Randy Haynes is going to start at the three. So it's good to see. I mean, even, look at this. Look at that size. Even Randy playing the three. They're, they're, they're already on that. I'm definitely looking them for them to get inside the paint, get the foul. They got to hit their free throws. If they do that early, this game should be easy for them. Let's see what Thompson does as well as Steve. And then look for them to pull out a quick defense to try to get in the passing lanes and see if they can get that open court and get those easy points. All right, we've waiting our season. Here we go. We are here, we are now in the Tech Council Center. They're definitely the same height. Here we go with the jump ball. ODU is going to get the jump ball. So Tessa comes out playing, man. They believe that they have the matchups. Brandon Stiff give to BJ at top. And the Porter already inside. Can't finish. I mean, he's got to finish those. He has the advantage, especially on the switches, if they're going to play man like that. But you saw they went inside early to Trey Porter. Looks like he's going to continue with that. Probably with a shot. It's off. So it's a little sloppy coming out early. From both teams, we see a lot of open miss shots. So just let's wait until things calm down a little bit. So ODU is going to play that man as well as they believe that they match up good with this team. Towson dives in the inside. He took it straight at Trey Porter's chest. We missed the basket. Tommy brings the ball up. Brandon Stiff able to finish. That was a big strong move from Stiff. Um, that, that's all night. The one thing that Towson, I think, has an advantage down low is you look at Alex Thomas, they're starting 6'9 this day. 265, or uh, Trey Porter, 610, only listed at 230. So they definitely, size wise, they have the advantage. But Trey Porter, so far, has done well inside. It looks like how Cass is coming out. They're not scared of them they're with their size. They're just going, man, and they're going to tell you to beat us. So Brandon has the ball at the top of the key. So you assume that's already a pick and roll type deal right there. But he comes out of it. Trey Porter backs his man down. Strong move and misses. 
Like, like I said, they're gonna go. They're gonna go for that early. He's gonna have to hit those. Randy Haynes gets charged with a foul. So Tassel will inbound the ball on their side of the floor. I mean, you see every time he's talking early. <laughs> and you have to love that. You have to love that from your leader. Brandon Smith gets hit with a foul. And it seems like the crowd is not pleased with that. It's already the second team foul here. ODU has to watch out for that. You don't want to get in the penalty real early and give them free buckets. Nice spin move. Oh. He finally gets the bucket. That was a lot going down down there. It was not initial defense by the Monarchs, but they couldn't finish. Towson gets the bucket. Yeah, we saw he missed the initial, and Towson got two offensive rebounds. And then the turnover, Towson heading back on the fast break. They get him out on the wing. Sloppy pass. Sloppy pass by Towson down there. They had the open bucket on the wing. It's going to be interesting to see who really takes advantage of this game. Right now, they're about even. I mean, even the score being 2 2 early. No team has really stuck out so far. Let's go, one! Randy Haynes pushing back off the missed three from Towson, slowing it down. Give it to BJ. Back to Randy, over to Caver on the wing. Caver with a contested shot. But Towson lost the rebound out of bounds. It'll stay at ODU ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. That wasn't a great shot by Caver right there, but I mean, time going down. They have five seconds left on the shot clock. You have to get it in, you have to score quickly. Caver inbounds to Randy Haynes. Three. Haynes with two. Then Haynes to the three. That's a shot right there. I mean, your mid-range, you're not far from the three-point line. It's a little deep, but not that deep. It's right in his pocket. That was good execution with the shot clock running down to get points out of the possession. Most definitely. Star for Towson takes a three, and he misses. Rebound Porter. They've been taking a lot of deep shots and not hitting them. I don't know if that's really their game. Haynes in the corner. He misses that. Rebound Towson. And a foul on Towson's Keith. Off the rebound. So the foul count's looking pretty even. Looks like it's 2-2 on both ends right now. So they get a timeout. We're going to go to commercial break real quick, and we'll be right back. Discovering new frontiers. World class scientists making life saving discoveries. Like using bioelectrics to heal wounds and treat cancers. We are our old and university. Building our to the center of research and innovation. Because Hampton Rose is our pride. I was looking for a program, program that I felt, I felt promoted inclusivity. The faculty has been very available. I get a lot of different perspectives on my writing. I feel like I made real, real progress. I've learned, learned how to get, get out of my own way. way. The story doesn't change, change, but the way, way you tell it does. does.
right, so we are back out of that timeout. We are. All right, so Odie was going to inbound the ball. Randy Haynes to inbound, give to Brandon Stith. Brandon over to BJ at the top. BJ back to Haynes, who takes a three, and he misses. Rebound, Towson. Just from the way things are looking right now, it looks like Haynes is getting a lot of good shots. Oh, he comes up with the steal. Cavers pushing. Cavers good pass down. Sorry, they got that here early. Cave of course, down, had a beautiful bounce pass. pass. That is definitely something they need right there to keep the momentum in this building. A big dunk like that from Haynes early. That was a great pass from Cave coming down the court on that fast break. And it all started with defense. Come on, defense. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Offensive foul on, or a traveling violation on Towson. I mean, that's just, that's just good defense. You're going to force them in the fouls like that. I mean, they're already three right there by Towson. Randy Haynes will bring it up. Give it to Porter, top of the key. Back to Caver. Caver over to BJ in the corner for three. And he misses. Rebound Towson. So, Towson has came out of that man. It looks like now they're in that 3-2 zone. Towson, they were called for being out of bounds. Now we're seeing Xavier Green come in, replacing B.J. Stiff. It'll be definitely see what, what Xavier brings to the team. Excuse me, he's uh, replacing Brandon Stiff, not B.J. So it looks like they're going to go that small. Like what we've been talking about, if Towson's going to play small, now ODU's going to go to that small lineup as well. Because you still leave Porter in there at 6'10 inside, and now they have... Xavier Green looks like playing the four. So look for them to give them more in those fields and try to get out in the open, in the open floor. Towson coming with a full court press off that inbound. So they go back to the man. Caver dribbles into the corner. Give it to Haynes up top. Haynes over to Green. Green give it to Haynes for three. And he misses, rebound. Towson's pushing on the fast break off the rebound. And they get a three in transition, Ooh. and he got it. That was a sweet three in rotation right there. It was just a flow. So it looks like that was just a breather for Brandon. It looks like he's about to check back into the game. Caver for three. And he misses, rebound Towson. by Trey Porter. And that's the size advantage that we've seen from this ODU team. So Trey Porter goes to the bench and Brandon Sims come back in. So it looks like they're going to steal with that small lineup with that one big to protect the paint. Oh, do you get hit with a foul? We haven't seen a lot of substitutions on the Towson side. So let's no. see if they're really going to go deep into their bench. I'm not sure. Towson to inbound after the foul. 13.34 to go in the first half. 20 on the shot clock. Traveling on passing. Is it me or they look like they're starting to get a little frustrated? Definitely. And that's another turnover uh, out of Towson. And ODU's been able to convert on a couple of them. Going back to that full court press. And so far, ODU's been able to navigate it pretty well. Caper up top, give to BJ in the corner. 
PJ back to Randy Haynes, green. PJ with, with the jumper. Got it. That was, that was just beautiful poetry and motion right there. He controls the ball, gives you a few dribbles, and just rises up on you. What, you, can't, you can't do anything about that. Definitely. And Minotti, you start making that shot. If you've seen them have a lot of convux, it's not all of them are falling. If they can start hitting these open shots, they can easily run away with this early. Another traveling on Towson. Wow. If Towson doesn't figure out a way to keep the ball, I mean, this might be this game might be over before it even starts. Yeah, I mean the score is right now nine to five in favor of ODU, and we've seen ODU miss a couple of open shots. This game is not as close as the scoreboard may predict it to be. BJ has it in the corner, give it back to Randy Haynes. Randy Haynes driving, kick to BJ up top. BJ drives, finishes. Wrong move by BJ Smith. That was not there, and he forced his way into the lane for the basket. He definitely created that all on his own. Jumper by Towson. Hits the rim, doesn't go in. Out of bounds off Towson, ODU ball. I mean, everything, it must be the Ted Constance gods. I don't know, everything's just rolling in ODU's favor right now. Towson going back to that press, getting to the half court. Manny Haynes bring it across. ODU has to be on a 6-0 run here. Kafer up top, give to Green in the corner. Swings over to BJ in the other corner. BJ kicks out to Green. Green takes the shot, and he drills it. Wow. And once these shots start going down, ODU is really starting to run away with it. That's an 8-0 run by the Monarchs right here. They're up 13 to 5. I mean, the last couple possessions from the Towson Tigers have been a foul, foul, turnover. They got the size advantage here on Green, and they finally get the bucket. Towson finally stops from running. They, ODU was playing that man. They got the twist they wanted. They got it inside the paint. But here comes ODU back on the offense with DJ Stiff. Mon Caver up top. Swing it over to Haynes. Haynes with the, his jumper gets blocked, but he is fouled. So Towson finally stops to run. They go up 13 to seven with 11-16 left in the first. So we like we're going to be right back from a commercial break. Our solution is there environments, environments like this. this. Creating energy, energy alternatives by turning algae, algae into, into biodiesel, biodiesel and green, green fertilizer. fertilizer. Visionary research. The Old Dominion University is solving pressing challenges in healthcare. Defense, renewable, renewable energy, energy the, the environment, environment, and other, other critical, critical fields. fields. My, My solution, solution keeping, keeping our, our environment and our economy, economy healthy, healthy by, by working with shipping, shipping companies to prevent invasive species, species from entering, entering our nation's water. water. Our, Our solution, treating, treating cancer, cancer, healing, healing wounds, wounds, and preventing, preventing disease, disease by, by using bioelectric bio technologies. Partnerships with business, industry, and government, and government in, areas in areas like modeling and simulation are creating new industries and, and thousands of jobs each year. year. Our, Our solution, modeling, modeling traffic patterns, patterns make, make hurricane, hurricane evacuation, evacuation safer and smoother. And smoother. My solution, 
harnessing the power of cold plasma to create a way of tools for the medical, medical community. Our R&D contributes nearly a billion dollars annually to the regional economy, enhancing the growth and vitality of our state and our nation. That's Idea Fusion. That's Old Dominion University. We are back from our timeout break, and Randy Haynes stepped to the free throw line. All right, this is what we were talking about, Grayson. This is the issues that they had last year. Let's see if they can knock down these free throws. Misses the first one. I mean, this was big. This was big for them last year. This cost them a couple games last year that they could not hit their free throws. This is the second one as well. Rebound Housen pushing it back up the floor. We're still seeing very strong defense at ODU. A bunch of contested shots. So, Tassin has put freshman Travis Ingram on the floor. So, let's see how they let's see how they use him. I know when he was at Norcom last year, they used him as that, that motivation player that to make those highlight plays. And if you're away, it's one of those things to get the crowd out of the game. So, let's see if he can do that here. We use the athleticism. Towson's really moving the ball well right now, trying to find their shot, but this tough ODU defense is not going to give them these easy shots that they're looking for. Towson just continuing to swing it around the three-point arc. Another, Another contested, contested shot. shot. And a foul. I mean, this defense by the Monarchs right now is really suffocating. I mean, if you can play defense like this throughout the season, it's going to be a good season for the Monarchs. That's about the third or fourth traveling violation we've seen on Towson already, not halfway through this first half. Green bringing it across half court. Gives over to Caper, back to Green. Green drives, takes a pull up shot. That's good. They're really starting to hit their shots now, and that's showing on the scoreboard. But he's sticking to this man defense. Towson gets a three in the corner, and he makes it. That was a tough shot right there, but I mean, you can't really do anything about that. BJ closed out, and it was just a better shot than it was defense. Yeah, I mean, I think they're definitely going to continue with that man-to-man -man defense. It's worked thus far. Caver with a drive, puts up a shot, misses it. Towson pushing the floor, drives, makes a layup. You have to stop the ball there if you're in the Monarchs. You can't let them take the ball coast to coast. All of a sudden, it's a three-point game. B.J. gives to Green up top. Green. Aaron Carver now in the game for the Monarchs. Aaron Carver on the ground. And he has the move. bucket. That was a good punt of fate. We saw it Xavier Green. I don't know. Pass. That looked more like a flop than anything. I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a hard move, but you got to be a man down there. Don't try, to, don't try to get the foul call. Play the defense. Towson is continuing to pass around the three-point arc, not really getting any penetration inside. Little floaters. That was a good, good right by there. Brian Starr. That was a little bit of double screen so he could finally get open. I mean, they got to run those things to get these shooters open. Green get back to Caver across half court. Caver up top setting up a play. Caver give it to Brandon Stiff up top. Brandon back to Caver. Caver over to BJ. BJ in the corner. Caver with a corner three. Misses it. Rebound. Travis Ingram for a thousand. Ingram bringing it back up the court. They get another corner three. That's way off. Rebound. Brandon Stith. Caver pushing it back up court. He drives it. 
and he gets the foul. That was a good move by ODU to really push the ball off the rebound and get a foul. And Towson, on the other end, that was a bad shot. I mean, I know they're a little frustrated that they're, they're not getting the open looks that they want, but you can't take shots like that. You have to take high percentage shots. I mean, this is not a team for ODU. Like, you don't want to put ODU on the open floor. Uh -huh. to the line. Here we go again. Let's see if they can knock down some free throws. Misses the first one. This is what we've seen last year out of all the ODU players, it seems like, not being able to hit their free throws. So Towson puts a whole new lineup on the floor. They take everybody out. And ODU puts pressure Marquise Godwin in the game. Now, this is key right here. I want to see. So it looks like they're not going to match him up against Travis. So that means they don't want Travis on him on the other end. Look for, look for Godwin to be open and hit some threes. He's a really sharp shooter from anywhere on the court. Misses the second free throw. I mean, here we go again. They're what, 0 for, 0 for 4 right now from the free throw line. And he takes out both Stith brothers and puts in Godwin and back Trey Porter inside. Thousand with the drive, little floater. Strong move, you got to get those rebounds. And when you have the size advantage that ODU does, you have to expect to get those rebounds. Yeah, you're going up in those trees. I mean, it's a little tough. And now they have Aaron Carver and Trey Porter in the front court. So we're going to go to a quick timeout break. we got to pay some bills. Like, thank you for joining us. WOD Sports, I'm Melo Styles, and I'm here with... Grayson McKinney. Thanks. This that great poupon, that AV on that dead top. So speak. Pushing it up the court. Change for Towson to take their first lead of the game. Timeout on the floor looks like a shaking up Towson player looking at his. Mouth. Jordan McNeil for Towson walking off, blood coming out of his mouth. He's being checked out right now on the sideline. Looks like he got hit there by Marquise Gottman on the other one, so they had to take a little injury timeout. They get a quick sub in, and Towson about to end on the ball. Greetings, greetings, Mark Nation. It's episode six of Inside the Huddle. My name is Randy Asari. My name is Tim McLaughlin. We're back with another episode of Inside the Huddle coming to you from uh, WOU Studios in the Web Center. Uh, let's get to the weekly uh, ODU updates for national sports and uh, ODU sports. Uh, first is uh, football for ODU. Our football monarchs are coming off their first win since September the 9th. Man, that's two months right there. So 
in which they beat uh, UNC Charlotte 49-6-0 for the homecoming win in their first uh, shutout in school history. But before I go with the other news, I was surprised at first that, you know, they even got to that point. I, I thought, like, since they've been a football program, I thought they would at least shut out a team. So for them to be the first team. Yeah, it took them a while to do that. It took them a while to do that. that. Definitely did. shocking. I wasn't surprised that when Tim gave me the information. I was like, wow, that's shocking right there. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely not their last. last. Yeah, it's not their last. So hopefully it can be more games like that where they shut out teams and they can come up victorious. So yeah, shout out to them and uh, congrats to them winning the uh, homecoming game. Uh, all OU needed were two field goals from uh, Nick Rice, and he, he converted from both of them. First was a 40-yarder in, uh, in the first quarter, and the second was a 30-yarder in the fourth quarter. Offensively, Steve Williams, he had a great game, 15 for 25 for 153 yards. Ray Lowry, of course, always doing well, 98 yards for 25 carries, and Isaiah Harper had six catches for 46 yards and 10 uh, yards rushing. Pace attack, and um, the defense also played well. Of course, they shut them out uh, just for 231 yards of total offense, the lowest total ODU has ha allowed throughout the whole year. So, congrats to them. Uh, up next, ODU travels to Miami, Florida, to take on FIU in a 7 p.m. game Saturday night. ODU leads the all-time series two to one, but FIU are having a resurgent year under their first-year coach Bush, da Bush Davis, going six and two, four and one in the Conference USA. And we'll be going to a bowl game for the first time in the 16-year history. That's surprising. So, I'll also not to mention that FIU is undefeated at home this year going 4-0. And yeah, let's see if we can uh, keep the momentum going after our 6 nothing win last week. Yeah, man. That's, that's true. So, moving on to men's soccer, uh, Tim will give you the news. So, yeah, the men's soccer team are hosting the Conference USA tournament this week. Um, the ODU is, or the ODU Monarchs are the number two seed. The games are on the 8th, 10th, and 12th. Wednesday, Friday, um, Sunday, the um, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. And um, ODU rounded out the triple header of quarterfinal games Wednesday night to beat the University of South Carolina by the score of 2 to, to nothing. And the game remained scoreless at halftime with ODU having the edge in shots to 7-3. to three. Um, The scoring started in the 49th minute when Tom Wustenberg headed in across by Hans Proschwitz. Um, and it was Hans' the first... Uh, I mean, it was Tom's first career goal for ODU. And the scoring continued in the 63rd minute when Jimmy Feilerman blasted a shot into the right side of the net after the ball fell to him from the corner. Also, um, his goal was number four on the Sports Center top 10 on um, Thursday morning. And next, the Monarchs play uh, six seeded at Marshall at 7 p.m tonight in the in the semifinals at the ODU soccer complex and also on Marshall uh, they have a first year coach um, and he came from like a division two program after he led them to like a final four birth and all that so should be a good game tonight uh, come on out watch some great soccer and see if we can get to the, the NCAA tournament in a couple games. All right, now we're going to men's basketball. The men's basketball team open up st uh, the season tonight at 7 p.m. at Concert Center against Townsend. I will be attending that game, so hopefully they come out with a W on the old, an old uh, uh, CAA foe against the Townsend Tigers. Um, any matchup against the CAA team should be tough, and Townsend's no uh, exception as the Tigers were picked second in the CAA. I'm really liking the look of our Monarch this year. Uh, once again, came strong on defense. They're a strong defensive team and much improved offensive team. Uh, the Monarchs beat CNU uh, last Sunday in an exhibition game, 141-46. to 46. That's a great, great uh, game for them to come out the first game of the season and play like that. Uh, five Monarchs uh, scored double figures in the game, and they were uh, Randy Haynes uh, with 17 points, Xavier Green 16 points, Brandon Stiff with 14 points and 11 rebounds, Trey Porter 13 points, and Mark Haver had 10 points, nine assists, and no turnovers, so that's great. And our uh, men's basketball team, was picked to finish fourth in this Conference USA by uh, talking by talking heads. So come out to the chat tonight and check out the new look Monarchs. That's and a great season. and also um, kind of like our starting lineup this year should be uh, Brandon Stith and BJ Stith, yeah. Mod Caver, Trey Porter, and um, Randy Haynes. Yeah, so they have a lot of uh, juniors, seniors playing uh, on the starting five. So a yeah, a lot of returners a lot and of a lot of newcomers as well. Yeah, so they have, yeah, they have a lot of seniors that not playing like, like last year with Denzel Taylor and uh, Jordan Baker. Jordan Baker. So you know they're missing some senior uh, seniors, but 
they still have a lot of players that yeah. played with them last year. So They'll recover and reload. They'll recover and reload. So, yeah, that's great for them. So, good luck for them tonight. And uh, women basketball, uh, our Lady Mars open the season this evening at 4 p.m. at the Ted against Liberty in the opening round in the WNIT. Uh, ODU has a great mix of veteran leaders and young talent and lost a and not lost a season open since the 2009-2010 season. So, once again, uh, good luck to the both teams for men's basketball tonight. So. And, yeah, uh, today's a big day for ODU sports. I uh, got the basketball doubleheader at uh, 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock, yeah. and the men's soccer game at 7 o'clock. So, uh, come on out, yeah. this, support this the Monarchs. Yeah. And uh, next we're going to talk about wrestling. The ODU wrestling team opened their season last um, Sunday at the Hokie Open in Roanoke, Virginia, and finished a second behind the number eight Hokies of um, several teams, numerous um, college programs, and the and several programs placed and contributed to their total of 188 points uh, among the results in the different weight classes. Um, in the 125-pound weight class, um, Killian Cardinal finished first, uh, won that category. Steven Simpson finished second, and Michael McGee finished fifth. In the 141-pound weight class, Alex Madrigal finished second. In the 149-pound category, um, Kevin Budok finished first, and... In the 157-pound weight class, Larry Early the third finished second, while Cape um, Hepner finished fifth. Uh, also in the 165 weight class, Luke um, Drugach uh, finished fifth. In the 174th weight class, um, Luke's its twin brother Dean Drugach finished fourth, while um, Selden Wright finished fifth. Um, and in the 184 weight class, Antonio Agui finished his second. George Walton, um, the third, finished third, while Connor Frey finished fourth. And lastly, in the 197 weight class, Noah Bushman finished second. And um, this Sunday, ODU host uh, uh, wrestling invitational. Um, yeah, come on out and support the wrestling monarchs as they uh, uh, should have a great program as they um, traditionally do. <laughs> right, we're going to Major League Baseball. Tim, you going to go with that? Yeah, I got this. Um, so now, as we get into pro sports, we can talk about some baseball. And although the season may be over, the awards um, are still going to be given out. Um, they've already been given out, like, the Golden Gloves and still have, like, Defensive Player and Cy Young and all that stuff. Um, as for the – to listen off, as for the National League, Tucker Barnhart – uh, for the Reds, um, won his first gold glove, and he was the catcher. Paul Goldschmidt of the Arizona Diamondbacks won his third gold glove, and he was the first baseman. Uh, DJ LeMayu of the Colorado Rockies won his second gold glove, and he was the second baseman. Nolan Arenado of the um, Rockies won his fifth gold glove, and, and the, he was the third baseman. Brandon Crawford of the Giants his third gold glove was the um, shortstop. Marcel Ozuna of the Marlins um, won his first gold glove, and he was the left fieldman. Ender Enciarte of the Braves um, won his second gold glove, and he was the center fieldman. Jason Hayward of the Cubs won his fifth gold glove. Um, he was the right fieldman, and Zach and Greinke of the Diamondbacks um, won his fourth gold glove, and he was a pitcher. Now for the American League, Martin Maldonado of the Angels won his first gold glove, and he was the catcher. Eric Hosmer of the Royals won his fourth gold glove, and he was the first baseman. Brian Dozier of the Twins won his first gold glove, and he was the um, second baseman. Evan Longoria of the Rays uh, of the Rays uh, won his third gold glove, and he was the third baseman. Angelton Simmons of the Angels. Uh, one is the third gold glove, and he uh, he was the shortstop. Alex Gordon of the Royals won his fifth gold glove, and he was the left fieldman. Brian Buxton of the Twins won his first gold glove, and he was the center fielder. Mookie Betts of the Red Sox uh, won his second gold glove, and he was the right fielder. And Marcus Stroman of the Blue Jays won his first gold glove, and he was a pitcher. 
And um, now we'll make our Cy Young uh, predictions. All right, now, Cy Young predictions. Uh, who Who's in the game for the NL again? Do you remember? Nominees? Yeah, nominees. I know it's, I know Scherzer and uh, what's it called? Strasburg, Strasburg is the top two. And then I think Kershaw, I think, is, is as well. So Yeah, I think Kershaw's in there. If anything, I think I got Scherzer winning it. He had a great year. Nationals been playing really, really well throughout the year, even though they didn't make it to the, like, far in the playoffs. But Scherzer always comes out. Even when he's injured, he comes to the place. He's a tough, t- tough leader, tough competitor. He doesn't want to lose. So, for me, I, I got Scherzer winning. What do you think? I'd have to say Scherzer as well because although um, Kershaw is on the Dodgers and they went further in the playoffs, um, he was kind of vulnerable. And, like, the Astros, like, did well offensively against him and all that. So, I mean, Scherzer um, did well in the clutch moments. Yeah. So, for the American League. Uh, I'm going to have to go with, well, I'm not entirely sure who the nominees are, but I'm going to have to go with uh, Justin Verlander. Yeah, of just course, because yeah. Uh, he was just like, dot, he was like, lights out. Yeah, throughout the whole playoffs. He's when, well since he got traded. Yeah, like, when the game was mattered. Astros. So, I mean. Since he got traded, Astros were playing really, really good. He so. was like, not in a regular season, yeah, regular didn't season. even lose in the playoffs. So. Playoff, so, for me, I also got Verlander. If he, if he is a nominee, he definitely got to give it to him because he's been playing really well throughout the. Since he's been traded from the uh, Detroit Tigers to the, um, the Astros, he's been playing really, really I good, think it's so. crazy. I still think it's crazy how he, um, like the trade was complete with like two seconds left two seconds and like left. the trade yeah, deadline. And they still, they still got their guys, so <laughs> he's going to be good for them. So congrats to them, those nominees. Hopefully one of those guys wins it, so we'll see. Now, uh, uh, Yeah, now we're going to talk about some uh, NHL. Um, there was a great slate of hockey on Thursday night. The best game was the Tampa Bay Lightning at the Los Angeles Kings. Um, the best team in the East versus one of the best in the West. And both teams have been um, surging on offense. Uh, Tampa Bay leads the league with 3.94 goals per game, boasting the NHL's top two producers in Steven Stamkos at 28 points in 16 games and Nikita Kucherov, 26 points. Los Angeles has adopted up um, to an up-tempo um, style with new coach John Stevens, which is magna or manifested with 34.5 shots per per game, sixth best mark in the league, and 3.4 goals per game, eighth best. And the Kings have double-digit point totals, uh, led by a resurgent Anze Kopitar. The captain has eight goals and 11 assists for 19 points already. That's on pace to shatter his 52-point output for the 2016-17 to 17, um, season. And the uh, Lightning ended up winning the game 5-2. to two. The Kings have won um, 11 of their past, or well, 11 of their first 16 games, or well, 15 games before the loss, tied for their second-best start in franchise history. So uh, kudos to them. Anze uh, Kopitar has led the way for the Kings, recording... 19 points in the season, and that's tied for the second most through the Kings' first 15 games of the season since the um, 2004-2005 lockout, and only Kopitar himself in 2009-2010 had more with 24. Um, And the current standings have the Lightning atop the Eastern Conference, Pittsburgh Penguins in the Metropolitan, St. Louis in the Central, and the Kings in the West, and I mean... I don't know about you, but I'm still waiting for the Washington Capitals to get on a run, and yeah. hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. I mean, they always turn up in the um, middle of the season and always play well. It just takes them a while. It just takes them a while, but, you know, they're, we'll just see how it goes throughout the year, end of the season. Hopefully they make it to the playoffs and make a run. Yeah, especially so. Alex Ovechkin leading, leading them because he, like, I don't know how he's been doing the last game or so, but through the first, like, Five or six games, he was like leading the league in he goals. Goals, yeah, but that's so, like since then he hasn't really been. Kind of dropped so off. Kinda dropped off a little bit. But still early. It's still early in the season. I mean, do have growing pains, so we'll see. Now uh, let's go to the NFL. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo, he got traded to the 49ers for a couple of picks. Um, I w- me personally, I was shocked at the fact that he was uh, actually traded. I mean, especially t- it's, he got traded, but he didn't get the chance to play like that Sunday. And I think so far, I don't think they're gonna have him play so. I think they're going to let him just slide the bench and um, just see how it goes maybe next year. But 
for uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. He is a great player. When his uh, number was called, when Tom Brady got suspended, I think last was the last season. Um, he really played really good for them. He won them a couple of games. He had a great statistics. Um, so he is at, the, at this point. He is ready to be a strong quarterback in this league. So I think 49ers got. got I think guy. that um, he'll lead the 49ers to a couple of wins. Oh uh, yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, it depends on if they're gonna let him play this year. Because I think from what the um, the coach and GM said, they're not gonna let him play. I think they're gonna just let him go with ride the bench. Why? I don't know. I guess to get acclimated to the offense a little bit, and I guess once he gets ready. Well, I mean, you're right. He does need like a few weeks, yeah, or maybe maybe. You don't know the offense. Or yet, so so yeah, you're right. He does need to learn the playbook and all of that. Yeah, you but he don't know the offense yet. So for I him. mean, he's been under Tom Brady for quite some time. Quite some time. So I mean, so. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of quarters that's been like that backed up Brady for quite some time and probably got a chance to play. But, but he, he, he actually, league. like, played during Brady's suspension, yeah, yeah. and he played well, yeah, too. He, he played well, but I'm saying, like, as far as, like, there's a lot of quarterbacks that went that backed up Tom Brady. But yeah, and backed went, up great but, quarterbacks. But, but went to other teams and didn't really play w- really well. Like, Brian Hoyer, he, he was at uh, the Patriots for a long time. He went to a different team, and he hasn't been the same. He's not the same. A good quarterback. Yeah, he was like once on the Browns. Once on the Browns, then he was with Houston. Then he had a chance to uh, in Forty ers this season, and then he got released, and now he's back with the Patriots, back in the Tom Brady, Ryan Mallett, same thing. He he was a uh, backup for uh, Tom Brady. A lot of people thought he was going to be, you know, the the quarterback of the future once Tom Brady retires. But he went to Houston, didn't play well. He's now in Baltimore. He's not. A good backup quarterback. So anything can happen when you change teams. Yeah, anything can happen when you change teams. But for, I think for Jimmy Garoppolo, I think it's best for him to get acclimated to the offense with uh, Mike Shanahan, be the quarterback that they expect him to be. Because they did trade him for I think a fir- I think a second round pick. So I think a first or second round pick. So you know they have their faith in him. They basically. have their faith in him. So I mean they because uh, it's a really good draft class for quarterbacks this year. They most likely going to be a top three pick in the um, the draft. So for them to say you know. Hey, we're going to trade some picks to get you, you know, shows that they really want this guy. So, um, congrats to uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Hopefully he gets his opportunity. He plays well for them because the 49 four do got a talented, like, team, I think. They got They've got they lost a ton of close games. They lost a, a lot of close games. They could have really been, like, what, 5-3 and three or, you know, 4-4. Four and four, Who knows? They yeah. Really, like, I think, like, we talked about in, in a couple of episodes that, like they're the first team to like have like five games, five like games losing like five points or less. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So something crazy like that. Yeah, but they I really mean, had a lot of close it's games. It's been un- unlucky. Yeah, this so. haven't a lot of things haven't gone their way on the quarterback position. So now they pretty much got the quarterback. So they just want to just they really build it for the future. They're not they're trying to win right now, I guess. So for them, I think it's good for them. So yeah, that was one of the uh, the things that happened this week. Uh, another thing was a lot of ex- uh, ejections. Throughout the years, multiple, throughout games. The season, multiple games. Uh, last week, uh, first was AJ Green and Jalen Ramsey. They kind of went at it. Uh, he, I remember it was kind of funny seeing that because I had AJ Green on my fantasy, <laughs> and I lost my fantasy because of that for, for what he did. Uh, so I was really upset for AJ Green for what he did. Um, AJ Green, they said. What it, I think after the game, I think this week, Jalen uh, Ramsey they interviewed him. I think after practice, and they was asking about the whole thing. And he was like, pretty much, like you know, I was pretty much calling him weak. You, you can't. I can't. Not I, a good player. You're not a good player. You're not. Your time is up. All the stuff, and it kind of got him rattled, you know. Because AJ Green, I think from what people see, it, like af- off the field, he's kind of a quiet guy. He's w- like well mannered. He's not really a, a talkative guy. He's so himself. He's yeah. He's to himself. So for him to kind of like, I, he pretty much got the best out. He kind of was in his head, and what happened? He only had like one catch for six yards, and I think that. Man, that said that he wanted to choke slam the guy and go WWF. On him, so <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of crazy that that happened. I so don't know. I guess he just let his emotions get the best of him. him. Yeah, it got the best of him. So, you know, I, that's not AJ Green's character from what they looks like. And for that, I was upset because you know, like I said, he messed up my fantasy for losing that game. Another another thing that happened as well was um, ejection. Well, like, another fight that happened was um, uh, Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore. And James Winston also had him for my fantasy this week, last week against them. Same thing. He got injured. He hurt his shoulder for a little. He hurt his shoulder for a little bit, and um, he he didn't play the rest of the game. But he was doing a lot of dumb stuff, uh, choking at uh, Marshawn Lattimore, the the cornerback rookie for the uh, the Saints. He's been playing really good for uh, the Saints so far, and I guess it got to his head. He pushed uh, uh, James Winston, and Mike Evans came out of nowhere and pretty much just trucked him. And put them on the ground, and they got to fighting and tussling, but they didn't get. I don't think they got ejected in that game. So, 
I mean, it's, it's just a lot of crazy mess going on in the um, season. So. My opinion on all of this is, like, even if you, like, like have a competitive edge and, like, talk to guys during the game, you got to keep your emotions to yourself. And yeah. Because it'll it'll hurt your team. It'll hurt your team a lot. So, I mean, because they, they pretty much, they, they trying to, I mean, this, the Buccaneers, they, before the season, a lot of uh, experts was had them probably make it to the playoffs and have a good season. They're, like, 2-6. and six. Two and five, they lost a, 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 they're in a losing streak at this point. So, for them, you know, for what they're doing, it's kind of surprising that they're, they're the record that they are right now. Yeah, it's so a shame for them. It's a shame for them. And then, um, I, one thing I forgot to put on the little notes here was, um, the last week, the last night's game against, uh, oh, the, um, the Seahawks and, yeah, uh, Cardinals. Cardinals. Yeah, it was, it was a close game. Um, so Mercer Sherman, he's out for the year, he tore his Achilles. So, yeah, uh, sorry for that. You big know, loss. Big loss for them. Their defense. Earl Thomas, he's still hurt. So the Legion of Boom is not booming no more at this point. So <laughs> not right now, at not least. Not right now. So um, yeah, the Seahawks ended up winning twenty-two to sixteen. Twenty-two to sixteen, close game. So I mean, it's I don't know. It seemed like the Seahawks a lot. I think I had them as my uh, Super Bowl favorite to make it out of the NFC before the season started. Now it looks like that. Those changes kind of out the window at this point. So yeah, it's not really going to happen. Not going to happen. It looked like it. I mean, what are they like? Five and four? Uh, yeah, five, no, six and three. I think. Six and three. I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I I'm mean, not, I don't know, but uh, I forgot. But well, still, long ways, to, long ways to go. But with, with the injuries that they've had and had a lot and, of injuries, and all of that, I mean, still not really the yeah, best my, chance. Yeah, I was surprised too because I mean they lost last night against my skins. You know, the Redskins beat them. Uh, I think seventeen to seventeen fourteen. 14 was yeah. Close. Close game. Quite the ending. Quite the ending. You know, Josh Doxon caught a pass at the one a long t- uh, catch. One yard line. At the one yeah. yard line. Rob Kelly, Fat Rob, got the one yard uh, touchdown. And our de- the wrestling defense play, played well against uh, Ryan w- um, Russell Wilson. Zach Brown was just everywhere, ch- containing him, trying to not let him go around. Probably had Passed his ball. best game of his career. The best game of his career. Um, I mean, it's a good win for the Redskins as well. I think it's a building block for them. Gets them riled up, hopefully, for this game against the Vikings. So, we'll talk about th- that matchup later on in the show. But, um. Yeah, and uh, another topic is I forgot to put him on those. Ezekiel Elliott, he, I think at this point he's he's going to take the six games. He yeah, he's he's done games. until like December the first. December first, no, I think. Uh, December first was like no, I think it's the twenty fourth. I think it's six, it was a six game suspension. Or well, well, like th- something's happening on December first, like some appeal or. Oh, you can read appeal. I don't know. No, I mean I I don't know what it is, but like I'm not sure. Something's happening on December first, but yeah, yeah, like that was his last game. Yeah, his last game. Week. I was thinking. So. I mean, kind of because I think he could still appeal it, but I think if he does feel and he plays another game this week against the um, I think the Falcons. I don't think that's gonna game. happen. If he, I mean, if he, I think if he could, then he he kind of uh, could uh, he could re- they'll reinstate the play. It will still be like might know, as well take the suspension instead of suspension, keep on fighting. Take the suspension. He could have did this throughout the year. I mean, the first week of the season, he would be playing right now. Yeah, we won't be talking about this. Right yeah, now. I, th- I <laughs> think I think that this is going to significantly hurt the Cowboys. I mean, it's going it's to hurt them. I mean, they only what five and three. I mean, yeah. it's still early in the season, so I mean, they they only have a caliber of Zeke on the on the front as far as the running back position. Alfred yeah, Morris, like, they don't have like a key back up. You know, Darren McFadden, they don't really have like they're, they're not Zeke. So well, they have Alfred Morris. Alfred Morris, but he's, he's, not, not he's not the what he was. What past the his rest prime. Of his, he's kind of past his prime. Darren yeah. McFadden, he's not the player he was when he came into the league when he was a top five pick when he was with Oakland. So, I mean, they're not Zeke. Zeke Ezekiel Elliott. So uh, we'll, see we'll, see that, goes, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Now, um, as far as mid season picks, I mean, eight, we like what we have week nine. Yeah, Keep we're basically season. like um, halfway through the season, through the and year. we're now gonna like update or give you guys our uh, mid-season MVP picks um, and all that. And who you got? I got Carson Wentz. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be me, I don't really like the Eagles, but I have to give it to Carson Wentz. He's been playing phenomenal. I mean, the man has just been. Unstoppable. Like, they got unstoppable. The man cannot get. He's been leading the best offense. Like. I mean, by the same time, I feel like you could put you could put an asterisk on that because they really been playing the easiest schedule throughout the whole year. Yeah, they so it's not like they have any like real challenging games. They but they haven't played nobody. Like the the only loss they had was the Chiefs, and that was pretty much the only competition they played throughout the year. Um, Maybe uh, later in the season they'll have a test or something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I looked at this because they still playing like the Chargers and. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think they have no, like they already, already beat the Chargers, but they already playing teams. They still not. They have like one of the league's easiest schedules, like overall, so, but overall. So they haven't really played nobody. 
I mean, they won. They beat the team. What they beat the Broncos like. They blew him out. They gave him like fifty points. Yeah, so it was like fifty to seventeen or yeah, something. Yeah, like I mean, you got Brock Osweiler as a quarterback. I mean, the defense is a top ranked defense with uh, with Denver, but at the same time, kind of going to have a good offense and defense. defense. So I mean, their defense is playing. They, they the Eagles overall have been playing really good, but even though I mean they haven't really been playing nobody. I mean, the rest of them, they had to work the the toughest schedule throughout the half through the first half of the season, and their record is four and four. I mean, I wouldn't expect that for us to have the toughest schedule the first eight games and yeah. us being yeah. um, four and four. So, but I, me, I got, I definitely got uh, Carson Wentz. That's my uh, midseason MVP so far. He's been playing like personally, good. as for their remaining um, like divisional games, they should easily beat the Giants. The Giants. They still play the Cowboys. They still play the Cowboys. Yeah, so maybe, maybe one of those games against the Cowboys should be close. Yeah, hopefully. I don't know. We'll hopefully it'll be a close game. But I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I'm hoping for them to get knocked off at some point, but I don't know. I just want they should really – I mean, they got the one, number one seed in the NFC. I locked up. They already got locked up. Home field advantage. They locked, locked up. up. So, I mean, if Carson was still playing the way he's playing, he's definitely a lock for it. If not, I, I got – if that doesn't have him second place, I got Tom Brady. He's been playing really good as well, so. Yeah, Tom Brady has picked it up, but yeah, he's playing really I don't good. see anybody but Carson Wentz at this point in time right now. Um, I don't see anybody but him winning it. Yeah, he's been. He hasn't really been. Um, Carson Wentz has been playing really good, so I got. I got them. I got one of those guys, either him, Wentz, or Brady. That's my. Um, that's my uh, midseason MVPs. Um, defense. What about you? Got anybody on the defensive side that you think might be an MVP? Mm, I honestly cannot think of anybody. Can't I don't think know. of anybody. I yeah. mean, it's not really a yeah, – yeah, I can't really think of anybody either that's really, like, standing out as far as on the defensive side. I mean, there's a defensive t- there's a team on the defensive side that's been playing good. Like I said, the Eagles have been playing really good. They really can't – they've stopped from anybody that's, that's in front of them on the defensive side. So I mean, the Chiefs had a good defense to start of the year, but yeah. it's kind of been inconsistent yeah. right now. Yeah, so – yeah, um, it's been um, very inconsistent for them. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You know, it's, it's, it's still a lot of games left in the season for them, for the, for all teams in the league. So towards the end of the year, we'll see what our prediction is at towards once the season's over. But yeah, once we can like look back and look back as we, we'll see how it goes. We'll see. If, we'll see if our prediction's still the same. So now, as far as some key matchups for the for the week, uh, Redskins versus the Vikings. We I talked about this earlier. Uh, both teams playing good, uh, even with a uh, quarterback not being th- there for the Vikings. With K- they got Case Keenum. They're playing really good. They're 6-2. and two. Yeah. Um, they're a great team. Their defense is great. Harrison Smith on uh, safety. Er- Everson Griffin on defensive end. Anthony Barr on linebacker. They, Xavier Rose at corner. Like, they really got a lot of key players that's, p- that c- that's top five in their position. So, I mean, it's really going to be a tough battle for the Redskins at FedEx Field. Um, my prediction is, even though – the, the, since when the Redskins beat the Seahawks, I, they have a lot. Their confidence is, is gone up, and I think them playing at home is going to be. I think I got the Redskins winning this game. It's going to be a close one because usually the Redskins games always close. You never see them blow out a team, so it's going to go seven. down the wire. I'm I got at least seven. seven yeah, points, seven points or less. I got the Redskins winning this game. What you think? Tim? Yeah, I mean, I, it should be a great game. Uh, two, two good teams. Um, I mean, yeah, like. Like Teddy Ridgewater's like uh, gonna be the backup yeah, this week. Yeah, he's he's off up. the IR yep. and all yep. of that. So, um, I mean, I got the Skins winning by a touchdown. We'll see. We'll see how each team plays, but yeah, it, yeah, it might mean, be close late in the fourth quarter. Yeah, because even w- it's still crazy how the Redskins won that game against the Seahawks. Um, because the Seahawks fans were celebrating right after yeah, they mean, scored. That crowd is really crazy when when they get on the field. Like the Seahawks when they play at, at their um, stadium. Is always they um, have one of the best crowds in the league. Is, they got a, one of the best crowds in the league. Um, for the rest of to have all like that, at least half of their players was injured. The whole o- offensive line was injured. I mean, from left tackle to right guard, only they have a Morgan lot Moses. ton of key guys injured, but they delivered. They delivered, and so. this week they're having a lot of players returning. I think Trent Williams. I just checked earlier today; he's questionable for the game. Jordan Reed might play. Jameson Crowder didn't play against the Seahawks, but he's expected to play this week. It's a lot of great uh, players that were injured for the rest of that's most likely going to come back for this week against Minnesota. So I got, I mean, I got the rest of win this game. I feel like beating against a great team 
and the Seahawks at their uh, home field, beating them on the road, I think it will be uncomfortable for them to come to their home field and win this game. They will definitely so keep them on their home field. I got them winning the touchdown, so that's my pick. Um, now for another key matchup game, we've got Saints versus the uh, Bills at Bills. Uh, me personally, I, the Saints have been, been on fire since they were, they saw 2-0. They won six straight. Yeah. They, usually, when you think of the Saints, you think about Drew Brees and their high-powered offense. Their defense always seemed like there never was a good defense in recent years, but so far – They've been playing really, really good. Yeah, it's great. more balanced this year. Yeah, more balanced this year. The Saints defense, been, they look like they've really been turning up a notch throughout this year. they got a lot of underrated players. Cam Jordan, he's always been a defensive guy that's give you that always gets a sack every time. Like I said, we talked about Marshawn Lattimore, their rookie quarter, cornerback from Ohio State. He's been playing really good for them as well. Shutdown corner. I mean, they're really going on all phases. They've really been playing really good. You know, their offense is playing good. Alvin Kamara from – he went to Tennessee – He's been a rookie for them. He's been playing really good for them. Backing up Marshawn, uh, Mark Ingram, mind you. And um, they all, like you said, you got Drew Brees at, on the center. Yeah, gonna happen. anything, yeah. Anything's going to happen. But yeah, it is, can deliver, yeah, so. but it is at Bill's cold weather game. Usually the Saints, yeah, they play in the Dome, so they don't, they don't really play in the weather, um, in cold weather games. And, um, and they, they'll probably have gotten there earlier, maybe a couple days ago, to adjust to the weather. yeah. Yeah, that would be good for them. So, um, but I'm I'm gonna have to go with the Saints stealing one on the road. On the one, I'm, I didn't even make my I didn't make my prediction. I, I, yeah. I, I was talking about I said all good things about the Saints, but uh, I don't know. I was I was about to say the Bills because the Bills they still got a they got a good team too. Their defense is, is playing really good too. Toss up, you think? It's a toss up. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but if if either one team wins, it's gonna be a, I say it's gonna be a close one because their defense. They, they say, uh, the Bill defense playing really good for them. So it's definitely a good matchup. It's a good matchup, but I mean, Tyrod has been playing good. Uh, Deshaun McCoy, he's always giving you, he's always getting at least 100 yards a game. Yeah. Um, I mean, they did miss, I mean, they did trade uh, Marcel Darius, uh, the Bills to J- Jacksonville, but they still got a good defense. And I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a tough battle. I mean, uh, it, Kevin Benjamin, he's supposed to be playing this week since they traded him. Oh, he's returning? I mean, he got traded to the from the Panthers to the Bills. Oh, oh yeah. So he hasn't. This is going to be his first season debut with them, and I mean, we'll that should be interesting. This should be interesting. So if anything, I got it. It's a toss. Of, if either one team wins, it's going to be a toss. It's going to be a close game. So now for uh, another matchup is Dallas versus the uh, Falcons. Uh, it's at Falcons. The Falcons have been playing terrible. They lost like four of the last five games. The suit, they were NFC champs last year. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, by such a big fall off by the Falcons yeah. after their Super Bowl run. Yeah, they could have won that game against the Panthers last Like, I mean, last Matt week. Ryan was the MVP. MVP. He's not having a good year. He's only having, like, I think, 11 touchdowns with seven picks. Their offense hasn't even been delivering. Has been, been, hasn't been delivering a, a lot. They don't really target Drew Julio Jones the ball enough. They I need mean, to get him the ball. He did get the opportunity to get the ball. I think last week he had a wide open uh, touchdown right in front of him. He dropped it. Yeah. Nobody was around him. He just he just dropped it blatantly. So it's just one of those catches you got to make. One of those catches you got to make. So they've been playing. Uh, they haven't really playing that good at all. I mean, but the Cowboys, you know, they lost their running back in Zeke. So it's gonna be a toss up game. But I got Falcons winning this game because it is, it is at home. They they gotta get some sense of urgency. So. It's going to be a big game for them. They're going to play against a good team in the Cowboys. So, I, I got the Falcons winning this game. I have the Cowboys winning this game by a touchdown. I got you got the Cowboys winning this game. Yeah. Wow. Why you Why you got that? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's a toss up, but they're awesome. they're just a better team to me. So I mean, I don't know how the Ezekiel Elliott um, suspension will affect them in this game and all that, but yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I got the Falcons win this game about ten points. At least a ten point game, seven to ten point game. Ten points. Seven to ten point game. Really? Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, I think they're gonna turn it up. I think they're gonna, you know, it's at home. I mean, Cowboys. It's a, you know, they say it's America's team. So, I got the Falcons win this game at least about ten points. I mean, when you don't have Zeke, because usually, I mean, we gotta show, see. Now, nah, I think this is gonna be week where we see if Dak Prescott is really a, a franchise his, yeah. quarterback, because usually he's. Giving the ball to Zeke 25. They're like a dynamic duo. Yeah, they he, lean on each other. He's pretty much throwing the ball to Zeke. I mean, he's pretty much giving the ball to Zeke. Now we'll see how he does without times. him. He doesn't really throw it. I mean, uh, Dak doesn't really have the ball in his hands, you know, navigating the offense. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we're going to see. These first, these, it's going to be six games where he don't have Zeke on the field with him. 
So this this game this Sunday game, we're gonna see if Zach I mean Dak uh, Prescott is really a, a franchise quarterback. So. It's his, it's the first real time that we can see, we can see yeah. how he is without like leaning on Zeke and like with him so the whole well, offense and all yep. that. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see. But I, I got about me personally, I think. I mean, the, the the Falcons, they still got a talented defense. Well, with Vic Beasley, he's a good uh, defensive lineman. So, Mar- Marcus Trufant, he's a cornerback. He's gonna, most likely going to guard uh, Des Bryant. So, he's not really having a good year. I mean, it's going to be down hard. Year. To, yeah, it's going to be hard to contain Jason Witten. He's always like, he's like Mr. Third Down. He's, yeah. Every time it's like 37, 38, he's going to catch a t- he's going to catch a pass for like 15 yards and get the team <laughs> more downs to go s- to get to the end zone. But, I got Falcons winning the game about 10 points. So, now the last uh, key matchup game for this week, we got the uh, Patriots versus, versus the Broncos. It's at Broncos. They got Bronx out of Waller. Trash self still playing for next week, this this next game. Uh, I don't know. Oswaller, he's not good at all. He's probably one of the worst quarterbacks in the league, in my opinion. Um, I mean, he's he's really uh, he's really the definition of, fin- of finesse because for him – He's still getting paid by the Texans, mind you, right? He's still getting te- what? He's still getting paid by the Texans. Um, uh, yeah, I he's mean, still getting paid by the Texans. I, I think like he'd be better as a backup. He's still getting paid by the Texans for this year. I think he's getting like fifteen plus million this year, and he's still and he's making about like two million with the Broncos. So he's making he's got two checks coming in. So he's he's the definite. He's of making a, money, but is he earning him, it? But. I don't think he's Oswald earning the would, money though. Yeah, but Oswald, he's not that good of a quarterback. Yeah, I mean. He's just not good. I mean, Simeon Sim- is not good. I mean, you could tell that since Payne Manning has been – since he retired, you would think John Elway, him being the general manager of the team, he would know his quarterbacks. He would know that who to get, who to sign. Um, Simeon, he hasn't been playing good. Packing Lynch, he was a first-round pick. He's still a raw talent that needs to probably – Yeah, he just, did great at Memphis. He did great at Memphis, but, I mean, he, at Memphis not really a football school. He didn't really play nobody, I guess, but he's still a, he still got raw talent. He need a – He's still not. Yeah, there. they kind of got to like, trade and train yeah. a quarterback yeah. or get someone in the draft. Get someone or, in the draft. So I, I don't point, know. I think this next after this season's over, with, they I, me personally, they got to they should tank to try to get one of those guys, Sam Darnold or uh, uh, was it Josh Allen, ba- Baker Mayfield, yeah, one of those type yeah. of players they can get come in. So because they still got a talented offense, they got Darius, I mean Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, two good receivers in the league. Or so, or they could trade for somebody or yeah, I mean, or I mean, kind of unlikely, but there's always the Colin Kaepernick option. They're not getting Kaepernick. I know they're no not going to get him. But point, I don't think Kaepernick's going to be in the league. I mean, I, I would love him to be in the league, but he kind of deserves to be, be just because he's a good player. He's just, still good. I mean, it's with a lot all of the like, a lot the, of the protests and all yeah, of that. There's a lot of quarterbacks that hasn't been playing in like two years that's going to work out, but Kaepernick's not, which is ridiculous, but. Who knows? I mean, Kevin is still an option too, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, but I got well, as far as the Broncos and Patriots game. I got um, the Patriots win this game. I mean, of course, Tom Brady. You can't, you can't pretty much count. You can count on him for to always come out with the W. Always deliver. Yeah, I mean, the, the Denver that altitude is always it's a factor because people don't play. The altitude is really different. A lot of teams get tired quicker when you play in, in the cold. It wears you out. Yeah, it wears you out. But they got a lot of talent. I mean, I think Martellus Bennett, he got away from Patriots. Yeah. The, the I mean, he got away from the Packers. The Patriots came and claimed him off waivers, so he's still, he's back with the team that he went to Super Bowl with last year. So him and Gronk, two-time duo right there. Um, they, I mean, it gives him, uh, what's it called, uh, Tom Brady a lot of options on the field. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see about that. I'm uh, I'm going to the Patriots as well, but oh, but I got at least winning. Yeah. By ten to seventeen points that game. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I, I got them winning by two to three touchdowns. Oh, two to yeah. Two to three touchdowns. Two, two to three touchdowns. My, me too. So, that's I, I that's the, I, twenty-seven to ten. That's my twenty-seven to ten is my final score for that game. So, that's what we got for. Seem like any, that's for for NFL, right? Or you uh, see yeah. At? I'm saying uh, thirty-four to fourteen. Thirty-four to fourteen. Okay, twenty-point game. So yeah, that could that could most likely happen. Uh, so I guess we're done with NFL now. Uh, last topic is NBA. Um, for the NBA, um, Eric Russell, he got traded. 
um, from he he tweeted from he don't want to be here at Phoenix to wanting to be at uh, Milwaukee. Although he was at a barber shop at the time. They said hair salon. They said. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Got you, got you. But uh, Eric Blusso, he's got traded to Milwaukee for uh, Greg, Greg, Greg Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. And they, got, they still got a chance to keep uh, Michael Brog, Brog, Malcolm Brogdon from UVA, rookie of the year last year. They still keep him, and they got Giannis. And they got Jabari Parker, Chris Middleton. They got a talented team, so. Yes, I mean, who do you, I mean, it's kind of hard for us to say who got the better of this trade oh, the, because the, bu- the Bucks got the better of The Bucks are going to be a better that's, team. Yeah, the Bucks got a better trade without I mean, Eric Bledsoe is a good player. Without a doubt, he got the, they got the better trade for sure. I mean, their team is playing really, I mean, they haven't really been, I mean, Giannis, he leads the league in scoring, but their record is it's it's like, not that it's good. It's mediocre. It's mediocre. It's, it's mediocre. kind of average. A lot of teams, uh, experts didn't expect that. It's a young happen. season, though, but I think that Eric Bledsoe can help them out a lot. Yeah, yeah, so. I feel like, like, Greg Monroe can have, like, big man uh, presence in Phoenix, but he's definitely not going to change the franchise or none of that. Yeah, he's not. I mean, Eric Bledsoe, he's a good player, but he's not going to make them to, like, a championship team to make them to the finals, but it gives them uh, added athletic. They have assets. They, they, they got have assets. assets. They got more so assets than maybe, they Maybe have. a couple of years from now, and because, like, uh, um, I was watching, I think either, I think like last weekend or early this week, I was watching First Take and, or like a uh, show on ESPN, and it was like, who do you think is going to be the best player over the next five years? Um, and it, uh, it was like two choices, LeBron James or uh, the Greek Freak. And to me, it was an unrealistic comparison just because of their, they're not the same age. They're not the same age. So LeBron is on the decline while the Greek Freak is on the rise. So, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you're right about that. I mean, Giannis, he is pretty much he's the future of the league at this point. Him, Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, he's the future of the league. He's playing really good. Yeah, all the young talent out he's there. MVP candidates, <coughs> candidates. So, for that, <coughs> Eric, Eric Blesso coming in on this on his team, bringing more athletic ability to the to the to for their team is going to be great for them. They most likely going to be a top three seed in the East. So, they might them they might. Uh, uh, play uh, either the Wizards or Boston or I don't, I don't think we, we can't make any uh, playoff um, oh, yeah, you can't make it. matchups it's still now. In, it's still early in the season. But so. um, they're definitely going to have um, like they'll, they're already going to be competitive in the playoffs. Yeah, they're going to be real competitive. Now, uh, as far as Lonzo Ball, he hasn't been playing good at he's been, all. He's been really struggling, he's been struggling so far. He's been showing like 20, 30 percent from the um, field goal percentage. I was watching some highlights from the uh, uh, I guess game against the Wizards, and he was just shooting like brick after brick. He was like three for twelve last last night against the Wizards. He had he almost caught, he almost had a triple double. He had ten points, eight rebounds, eight assists, but the team lost. Um, that's it was a, like one eleven and ninety five, I think. Yeah, that was the score, final score, and um, yeah, I mean Lonzo hasn't been playing good at all. I mean their team hasn't been playing. I mean the team is playing all right, but. They five and six, but as far as him, particularly his his stats has been terrible. Shooting, like I said, twenty five, twenty eight percent. To me, from the field goal percentage. To me, he's percentage. overrated. I mean, so like you said, it's, it's, it's early in the season. I mean, I mean and it's early, rookie, and it's early in his career. Rookie, yeah, when you're a rookie, you're yeah. not. When you're a rookie, you can't take the lead gonna, by a storm. Yeah, you can't take the lead I mean, by a storm. You're not I mean, LeBron when yeah, LeBron yeah, yeah. came in the league already. He'll, he'll like slowly improve 20. once he adapts to it because it's a big adjustment from college to pro and yeah, all that. It's yeah, a lot. Right. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, so far, I mean, Lonzo he hasn't been playing good. Like I can say shooting twenty eight field goal percent is 20, 21, 25 from the three point, and he's shooting fifty percent from the um, from free throw. So yeah. So overall, the shooting game is not been good. People are kind of telling him to change his shot motion because he does got like a little weird form of a jump shot but you know I mean I so mean, in the season but I mean he was dynamite at UCLA he was good at UCLA but it's college this is NBA two yeah. different uh, leagues um, I think people compare him to Jason Kidd and Jason Kidd his first couple games of the year he was, he had the same stats that Lonzo got right now so I mean it's still scoring pains you know but it's, it's, it's all what happens when you transition yeah when you transition but I mean it's so early in the year. I mean, I guess once he's at the single one, he's going to get the NBA game, the NBA feel of it, and he might come out on top and that scoring percentage and all that will go up higher. So we'll see. Now his brother, D'Angelo Ball from UCLA, and a couple other players, uh, they got they got um, arrested for shoplifting in China. They was at a Louis Vuitton store. 
I think they were trying to get some shades, some some glasses, and they yeah. stole it. Yeah. And they got a question for it, and he got arrested. And it's possible that he might get what three to ten years um, in jail. Or, but they <laughs> now I'm hearing that. Uh, I think I, I seen yesterday in an article that now it looked like home uh, house arrest is uh mo- it's the most possible option. That oh they're gonna yeah, get. yeah, yeah. That's probably the um the most likely thing that they're gonna get is house arrest. But it's still unfortunate for him. Especially like when you're in another country, you gotta yeah, you, you gotta, gotta you gotta know that you gotta I respect mean, the, them. Yeah, the rules are different. Like, it's a lot different than I mean, over here. We, you think already you're just gonna call you Lord and tell you to come over and you know bail you out? It's not like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, so. it's so it's more yeah. strict in it's other strict, countries, strict. It's especially in China. They don't they don't play about that. Yeah, they're country. communists. Yeah, they're communists, so they don't play about those type of things. So so I mean, that's a pretty big loss uh, for. UCLA. I mean, I know like freshmen or whatever, but still a couple of guys off the roster probably. Yeah, I mean, it's more. more I mean, they're saying they might, they might, the, him, Leandro, and a the, the couple of other players that got arrested with him, they might get suspended a couple games. But they're even, they're even saying that he, that he might get um, kicked off the team. Up, they might kick off the team for doing that because it gives UCLA a bad look. Cause UCLA, UCLA is such an international college. You know, yeah. it's not just like play like people from LA that's goes to schools every people everywhere all yeah. across the country go, go to LA to do go to college and get the education so yeah basketball it, football all the sports and everything so I mean. for them to do that it gives the, the UCLA the not just the, the team but the, the school as a whole it gives them a bad look and they already got the ball family as a nationals family yeah with so their dad and all that dad and all that so it just brings in more new more attention more attention for no reason so yeah, I mean, I, that's what, that's. Uh, we'll that's see. We'll see if like UCLA can recover or and how the Bulls yeah. will like react to that. But I mean, that's a uh, pretty big um, incident that happened. Yeah, man, you're right. So I mean, it's, it's we'll see how it go for them and um for Landrio and his and the Ball family and now uh the Thunder, they're 0 and 5 against the Western Conference teams. They lost last night to Denver, so they guess they're 0 and 6 now. Um, they really <laughs> haven't been playing really good. I mean, so like it's. It's early seasons, ten games, 10, 11 games a year, and especially like with, with, like with, like the, with their new uh, big three, as you will call it, uh, they need time to gel and adjust. Just their whole new roster, new players, old players, gotta gotta get used to each other. You gotta get used to each other. I mean, I think um, Russell Westbrook, he's really trying too hard to be like trying to dish it out to those to Paul George and Carmelo because you know they can't they got traded because of him. You know. Melo even said himself that Car- Carmelo said himself where he said you know the reason why he even came to the uh, to the Thunder because of Russell Westbrook. Yeah. So he's an influence on him. Yeah, he's an influence on him. You see the way he played last year, averaging triple double. They want to be a part of that and you know win some games. Yeah, they want to have success. So have success. I mean, he hasn't really Carmelo hasn't had that much success in New York. That's the reason why he wanted he got traded. He wanted to go to a team where he can find a way to get to, get to the playoffs and hopefully win a championship. So he went to the um. The Thunder, but they haven't been playing so good so far. But like I said, so early in the season, you know they're gonna find a way to um, get some wins and get a winning streak going. But yeah, also the uh, Cavs haven't been playing that well either. Yeah, yeah, the Cavs been playing really that good either. They lost last night to the um, Houston. It was a close game. Yeah, they were. I think five and seven. So they haven't really been playing so good so far. But you know. But I mean, I think that they'll um, like pull it together and yeah. uh, like be a good team later later in the year. But, I mean, it's just, it's just the beginning of the year. And um, I think that Isaiah Thomas will have a yeah. have an impact when he comes back. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to re- – I mean, from what it looks like, they're hoping – they're trying to rely on Isaiah Thomas to come back so they can get get more wins. But they, – they, they can't rely on that. They can't they really got, rely on that. They got to do it themselves. You got LeBron James as, as your player. You can't rely on – Another like Isaiah Thomas, you know he's a great player. He's not LeBron, so yeah, because they have. I mean, although they're like up there in age, they have Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, and yeah, other guys to Kevin deliver. Love, yeah, they, they, they yeah, they, they, can, they, can deli- they can deliver. But I think at this point they're just bored. I think they're just waiting t- to a hit like eight. I want to hit like March, like maybe like after the uh, All Star break. So they turn it up and actually win games, and you know, because that's I mean, last that's year, not what you should do though. You can't. It's not. It's not right to like wait a certain amount of time and then kick it to the next level. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean, true. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, at the same time, last year they were they were number they were second in the East Eastern Conference. They they wasn't trying to win sixty plus games. They just wanted to get to the playoffs. And yeah, they were. I mean, they wanted to get to the finals, and they did that. You know, this year they can go in the third, fourth seed 
and they will make it to the finals. Like it's just it's just how it is. They got, just who they are. They got the best talent in the East. So best player on the planet. Best player on the planet. So when you got that, that that's what happens. And um, well, speak, going back to OKC, uh, Billy Donovan, Paul George, Russell Westbrook, they all got fined uh, fifteen racks for uh, criticizing the officials. I mean, they really had a bunch of like questionable like calls called on them. Like Russell Westbrook, I think he was going for a jump shot. The player pushed him. One of the teams, when I think when they played against the Kings, the player, the defender, he they pushed uh, Russell Westbrook, and he got he fell. Yeah. And they called like a flagrant foul on Russell Westbrook. Like, yeah, it's on just the crazy. Play. Same thing happened with um, Carmelo Anthony. I think when they played against Portland, same thing. He tried to drive the basket. He like he hit he elbowed um, Nurkic in the el- in his face and laid it up. Nurkic was <laughs> out here fell like you know he he was trying to he was in a he was in an acting. He was doing an acting role or something like that. He looked like he won an Oscar. Yeah, that. like flopping he, he or whatever flopped. they call it. He was in the. He was on the ground for like ten hours, just looking at like like my face got messed up. You know what I mean? And they gave him when it was probably perfectly fine. It, I mean, he got hit. I mean, he did get yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't like it didn't look that excessive to the point where you end up um, you on the floor for like forever in a day yeah. just to you know what I mean just to get a call. So they the referee referees bit of an overreaction. It. Referees reviewed it. They and they said. Yeah, he got flag. Carmel got flagged too, and he got ejected from the game. So, it's a lot of criticism going on just from them. So, I mean, when they're, you they're probably it, they're probably uh, seeing it, seeing if they can get some calls yeah. with how big big players there are. Yeah, but I mean, true. when you lose a game, that's what happens. So. Yeah, yeah. Also, the um, Philadelphia 76ers uh, have won five five of six games. They had won five straight before their loss last night, and they're. Kind of like one of the surprise, surprise teams, teams in the league. They've been playing really good, good basketball. They really, um, they won a lot of great games. Ben Simmons, ben Simmons Joel Embiid, Joel Embiid, but Ben Simmons is pretty much he got a, at, at this point. Even though it is, like I said, it's still early in the season, but at this point, you, you gotta give him the trophy as far as rookie of the year. He's been playing no like he's been playing like a season bet so far. He's averaging like eighteen, ten, and then like nine assists. Like he's he's been he's leading close, them. He's pretty much close to a triple double every game. So. He's been leading them. He's been having a lot of highlight dunks every game. I mean, it was a close game. They lost to against um, – they should have won that game against Sacramento last night. They had it was about, like, one point. You know, one point. I mean, it was a close game. Um, but they should have won the game. They should have won the game. It was a close game. But they had, pretty much had it on lock. They just had a little miss possessions throughout the year. So Yeah, I mean, it's kind of – Throughout the, just the game. It's kind of crazy just because uh, when you usually think about the 76ers, you – Think about like one of the worst teams well, in the league, team, about trust or the something process, like that. But that stuff, so. now it's um, yeah. whole opposite, whole, whole different whole opposite of them, of them. So they've been playing really good so far. So rest of them. Um, another team that's been playing really good is uh, the Knicks. Um, the Knicks been playing really good basketball. They were over five hundred for the first time since 2012-2013. And I mean, poor Zink. I mean, you would think that uh, Melo being out, they would miss. They'll miss him because he does. He is a score machine, but Porzingis I mean, he was good, great. but he didn't lead them to no championships or anything. Yeah, lead them no championship, but he still was a, a a scoring option that gave him a lot of points. But it seemed like Porzingis took it in his hands, and now he's like one of the top three he's been, he's been players doing, in scoring. He's averaging like almost thirty a game. So he's been playing, playing crazy. Good. Porzingis is playing really, really. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's like no stopping Porzingis. It really isn't. So yeah, I mean. When you're when you're seven foot and you can bring the ball down the floor and you can basically play like all five positions. He was, I mean, he can he can really play the three, the four, the five. Yeah, two. but like I mean, shoot, I mean, still shoot. though, he got limited. Though. He got limited. Without range. versatile, you are like that. That's crazy. Yeah, he got limited range. He can shoot from anywhere from the court and really play good basketball. So and and he's he's doing he's having close to thirty points per game. So yeah, far, he's so. he's clearly uh, turning expect, the yeah. Knicks franchise around. Yeah, close to, making them close, look like they could be a playoff team this year. So as, as since the season's going on and as of now, nobody expected that from them. A lot of people had them being like the top, one of the worst teams in the league. So now <laughs> from, they surprised a lot of play experts so far. Maybe an eighth, eighth seed. Yeah, they can make it to eighth seed. Make, yeah, something yeah, like that. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see how the season goes. Now, uh, last uh, topic for yeah. NBA, the Celtics been playing good. I mean, nobody thought that they ten and two. Yeah, the first first quarter, the first game of the year, Gordon Hayward goes down and he is yeah, out for the entire messes year. Whole, messes whole huge, uh, leg up, huge loss. Ankle. Yeah, he was lo- he was huge loss for them. Probably going to be their the star player of their team. Yeah, man. So, but like, I mean, what well, they lost, they lost two straight. But Kyrie Irving has been playing great, and I mean, 
carry them. They won the, ten straight since. They so. said they haven't lost a game since the uh, the first two games when Gordon Hayward's been. But out, they've so. had like um a couple of guys down like Jason Tatum and Jason got Al Horford. Yeah, Al Horford. So, but the bench, it, it's no, bench. it's no, no, yeah. um, big injuries though. Yeah, it's, there's all minor stuff. So they're all I mean, minor stuff. They don't really have a bench so far either. So, I mean, the yeah. bench hasn't really been playing that well. But they got to the develop time, that. And they really haven't been playing nobody like that too. Even since they had that ten game winning streak, yeah, they've really been playing a lot of team, good teams. Any big test? Any big test? But I think as the season going, they really going. We, we're going to see if they're really the team. Yeah, that see who the real Celtics are. Real Celtics are this year. But Kyrie so far has been playing like a point guard. He's handling the ball. He's not really the ISO player that he was in Cleveland, and he's pretty much he's changed his game. And yeah, he's changing well his role. He's changing his role. He's going, going well for him. So congrats to those guys, man. Congrats to um them to the Celtics. See going how it goes from here. Yep. Yeah, um, before we um, shut things down with this episode, I kind of want to uh, change topics, if you say. Um, so I'm a part of this organization called um, the Off-Campus Commuter um, Student Association for like um, kids who um, like still live at home and drive, uh, drive from wherever they live, Virginia Beach, Chesapeake, Norfolk, or uh, live in like an off-campus house. And we're basically just just an organization for students to get to know other off-campus students, off-campus and commuter students, and to get involved at ODU. And um, I just want to shout out if there's any off-campus and commuter students out there who want to meet others and get involved, um, hit us up on Monarch Link and on Twitter. Our Twitter is ODU underscore OCCSA. And just search us up on uh, Monarch Link as well, because uh, we usually have meetings every other Monday at um, five o'clock, and all of that we are, um, I guess, I mean, I could really just say desperately looking for new members because we have like 31, 30 something people on on Monarch Link, but we've had like four or five members, and besides me and one and one other kid at our first meeting. Um, we haven't really had, had nobody come out. I mean, I get that, um, I get that, like, 5 o'clock is kind of late uh, for commuters on a Monday and all that, but, I mean, I know you guys are out there, and I know you want to meet others, so hit us up and come to the next meeting and have a great time. Yeah, man. Yeah, hopefully so. They, hopefully they come out and show, show, show some support for y'all, so hopefully, good, good luck to y'all for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to do the closing? Or? Uh, yeah, sure. I yeah, mean, uh, ahead, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, uh, everybody, for listening to Inside the Huddle. Yeah, thank you. Please listen again next week as we bring you another uh, update on ODU sports and other sports of interest. You go Monarchs, everybody. Yeah, until next shout week. Shout out to my mom and my dad and everybody else back at home. Shout out to my brothers, everybody back home. Yeah, That's also it. a big weekend for ODU sports um, in soccer, doubleheader in basketball today, wrestling on Sunday. Come out, support your come, Monarchs. Yeah, come support. Go Monarchs. Let's get it. Hello, and welcome to the Big Four. I am one of your hosts, Austin Peters. Grayson McKinney. Is the other host. Way to finish that one off. And with us again tonight, uh, as in week two, we have uh, with us... JT Lanham. And as ever, he is very excited to be here. <laughs> a little under the weather. Today. Can't stop talking about it. He texted me 20, 20, what was it? Practically back. Yeah, back. yeah. He was like, I know I'm a Patriots fan. Please have me back. Just had to be back. It's what we do for the people. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go into some sports because that is what we like to talk about. And uh, that's all we talk about. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Let's start with the uh, the MLB actually. Oh, okay. So uh, some little game happened on Wednesday. No big deal. I wasn't really watching it. I was like, uh, I was watching the Major League Soccer Championship. Of course you are. What is wrong with you? No, I'm just kidding. I was not watching that. I, I'm only gonna watch the last game. It would not have surprised me. It's not a very good series. But we're not here to talk about soccer because Grayson won't let me. We're gonna talk about baseball. And some game happened. Do you know what it was? Hmm. T-ball? T-ball, like, qualifying? Eastern Regional? Pacific Central, you idiot. Oh, okay. JT, Jeez you're the baseball Louis. guy. Yeah, you're the baseball Informed game. Did us. something happen? Yeah, it was like the Brooklyn Dodgers. and 
<laughs> Houston Astros. That's a pretty good one. All right, yeah, the World Series. Astros took it. That it. uh, that Sports Illustrated thing. Uh, it like uh, it was right. Came true or whatever. It was right. I would have been more happy if Back to the Future got it right with the Cubs last year. Two years ago, actually. I was about to say they did get it right last year. Two years ago. All right. Yeah, I mean, that, it happened. It's over. There's not much to say about it. But, I mean, who do you think is going to be... They haven't uh, announced MVP, have they? No, they what? haven't announced anything. They announced the finalists. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of that, let's go on to that. All right. Um, let's... Uh, let's uh, who do you guys think is uh, are getting these awards? Let's let's start with uh, A.L. Cy Young, because why not? Okay. I think it's Corey Kluber, hands down. Hands down. I couldn't agree more. Good insight. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> that's it too. <laughs> that one's uh, kind of a boring one. Uh, but so on that same page, uh, and Elsa Young? Uh, I think it's going to be Scherzer or Kershaw. I don't think Strasburg's going to get it. Oh, no, I don't think Strasburg's in the running. But I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think Scherzer gonna, Scherzer's going to get it. Not sure if he should get it. Uh well, I don't know. I, you've got very two evenly matched pitchers here. I think it should be Mike Trout. <laughs> he should win NL Cy Young? Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a hot take. <laughs> that is most certainly a hot take. No, but I, I think it's going to be Scherzer. Um, they both pitched well, though, all year. Absolutely. Well, Scherzer kind of didn't do incredible after the... What was his record? Second half. Um, I think his ERA was... Just hovering around two before the All Star break, and then after it was around four. What was his record? I don't know his record. That's on my head. I'm just talking about ERA. That's what matters here. Well, all three of them at some point in the season were like the best pitchers on the planet, and they all got injured at some point in the season. So they're all pretty similar. True. Similar. They're all really dang good. Um. So let's go for let's go. Um. Let's say MVPs for last. So we're gonna go rookie of the year for let's go again. And so the AL even something to talk about. Yeah, the I mean, AL rookie of the year is just Aaron Judge. Andrew absolutely Trey Mancini. Uh huh. He had a good year. He did have a good <laughs> no, year. No, it's Aaron Judge. Everyone knows that. It's not even a question. Nobody is even like debating about it. And then debating. same thing about the NLA NL. Aaron Judge. It's Corey Belt. Okay. Did you say Corey? Yeah, Cody. Cody. Cody Bellinger. <sighs> Did you not watch the World Series? Yeah. Did you I'm just a poser, not watch guys. Him strike out? Can he can't hit a curveball to save his life? No, he cannot. No, he cannot. He, he did not uh, hit that very well, at all. A uh, little more uh, boring. AL Manager of the Year. This one is interesting. John Farrell. That could be. <laughs> it should be John Farrell. Should be back. <laughs> Oh boy, um, there's like ten managers in the AL that could win that. There's only three that are nominated. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> I think I think it's AJ Hinch taking the Astros to the win. I think uh, that's who it's going to be. Although I could see uh, Trey Fran Tory Fran Terry not Terry. What did I say? Troy Trey <laughs> getting names wrong all the time. I'm reading them off a sheet of paper Tito. too. Um, I think Paul Molitor should win it because. <laughs> Lost like 90 games last year, and a year later went to the playoffs. The and twins? at the trade deadline, they trade away their two best players. Is that the Twins? Not two best players. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think I think it's gonna be AJ Hinge. I do. I, I like the Twins. He, I mean, they lost 100 games last year. Like they lost a lot of games. Not 100. In it's close to it. L Manager of the Year, probably Dave Roberts. The, so I think the Dodgers came out strong, especially when the vote happened, which was bl- before what the Fall Classic. The so, vote, yeah, it's something like that. It was a, it was a, a minute ago. Diamondbacks. You think all NL West teams? NL West is that really was it really? Oh good? yeah, I didn't, I didn't put that together. Yeah, I feel bad for the uh, Rockies and the Diamondbacks. Poor guys. All right, let's go to the ones that uh, are actually very interesting. Let's go ahead and start with NL MVP because we did AL for all the other ones. So why not make it confusing? Got a major problem with this one. You do? Yes. All three of them are worthy, but two guys are missing from that list. Nolan Arenado and Charlie Blackman. Mm -hmm. They're on the same team. So? That's like what everyone's saying. Uh, They can't be nominated because they're on the same team, so it cancels them out. 
That's stupid. But they're both like Stras- the best Strasburg players. and Scherzer were nominated. Exactly. I, I don't I understand. Mean, that argument Charlie mute. Blackman had like one of the best seasons as a leadoff Blackman hitter in a like ever. Had the most RBIs by a leadoff man in history. His stats were like all of them were better than Mike Trout. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, we're not here to debate the woulda, coulda, shoulda. I mean, shoulda. Who do you think it's going to be out of Goldschmidt, Staunton, Stanton, Stanton, Stanton? I'm from Virginia, and Votto. I think it's Goldschmidt. I think I think Stanton. I think Votto. Just to be different. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Are, is that? Are you guys all, both serious? I'm serious. I like Goldschmidt. I'm, I'm serious I, I, too. I like Goldschmidt. Oh, okay. Stanton's like way to not be edgy. Stanton's probably gonna make some of the home runs, and everyone cares about. But home he runs, like but... he only batted like 250. I mean, Goldschmidt was the best all around player, and they made the playoffs. Mm. Well, that's technically true. Although okay. I don't really care about if you make the playoffs or not. The more interesting one, AL MVP. How to be? How to be? Yeah, I think so, too. But, I mean, people are saying it could be Aaron Judge. I mean, the month of July that Altuve had. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, my God. Altuve was consistent yeah. the entire year. Well, Angel, yeah. I mean, yeah. He was just a, a dominant player. Because he, we saw and he's Aaron, so, so likable. We saw Aaron Judge kind of fall off after the All-Star break. Yeah, he, he was, uh, I mean, it was that, uh, the home run derby curse. I think Aaron, not Aaron Judge. Jose Altuve's lowest batting average for, like, any month was, like, 291. Jeez. A boohoo, a two ninety one. I know it's awful. That's a down year for him. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, jeez, Louise, he's a monster. This should be out too, He's so likable. What a good guy. What a good guy. All right. Um. So I love the MLB off season. I think it's fascinating. So let's talk about um all of these different manager crises that are crises 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 that are going on. Thank you, crises. So the Red Sox, the Tigers, the Mets, the Yankees, the Phillies, and the Nationals are all going through manager hooplas. Skipper problems. Skipper problems. I hate that term for some reason. I don't know why. Skipper? Yeah. It, well, in the terms of, like, a manager. I have no problem with it. He's the baseball guy. That's JT's hot take I'm for the night. To... <laughs> the Sox. John Farrell, he's gone. Alex Cora, Astros bench coach, he is in now. Nothing really uh, in about that. Um, the Tigers, uh, Ron Gardenhire, he was the Diamondbacks bench coach. Uh, that's it. Nothing really interesting there either. Twins manager. Uh, One over a thousand games. That is also true, technically. That's why you're here. Thanks. I forgot about that. Uh, Pretty important. Terry Collins, New York Mets, uh, he resigned to join the club. Uh, front office, and then uh, he is now replaced by Mickey Calloway, who was, who was he, JT? I don't know this one. The Indians pitching coach, you moron. How did you not know that? I should have known that. And then um, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the Yankees, they still haven't interviewed a single person. Not one. Hot take, it's Dusty Baker. Just kidding. They want to win. He's ever going to get hired again. No, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute too. But um, yeah, no one's been uh interviewed, which I think is fascinating. John Farrell, is he going to the Yankees? I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see. Still that. crying over him leaving. Uh, the Phillies. You know who interviewed for them? Who? John Farrell. You know who didn't get hired? John Farrell. They hired a real beefcake. Oh, yeah, Gabe Kapler. He's jacked. Jeez, he's jacked and shredded. I remember that. Yeah, I mean, if you... G-A-B-E space K-A-P-L-E-R. Google it. He's jacked. And then also add a shirtless after you... Uh, oh, my goodness. He's ridiculous. He's jacked. <laughs> oh, he's also grade just... Grade A uh, beefcake. Grade A beefcake. There's Grass so much beefcake. beef. So much beef. Look at this. He's holding a baseball bat, and he's looking shredded. He looks like he's about to tear down your door with his bare hands. Uh, overalls and a fireman axe. Also, he uh, interesting fact, he's the MLB's first Jewish manager. Good for him. Kudos. Yeah, good for him. Um, wait, Mazel hold on. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. He's the Phillies' first Jewish manager. Oh. <laughs> yeah, still good for him. <laughs> yeah, good for him. Breaking down those... Very, very small barriers hey, that he would be able the, to tear through because he's that jacked. The little things in life. 
<laughs> John Farrell interviewed Washington Nationals. Guess who interviewed for them? I'm guessing John Farrell. Final answer? Nah, Kevin Long. Oh. I'm just kidding. Also John Farrell. Cool. Got him. I got Grayson punked. Uh, but obviously Dave Martinez was hired, as, and he was the Cubs bench coach. Poor Nationals. Dusty Baker didn't deserve to be fired. No, he did not. Speaking of Dusty hey, Baker, peace. will he ever get a job? Poor dude. I don't think so. Do you think he wants a job? He definitely wants a job. But You think so? I don't think front offices are How hiring old, old managers anymore. He's up there. I'm looking it up. He is currently 68 years old. And he's not in great health. I don't know if you've ever seen the dude. Yeah. He's no, he's no Gabe, Gabe Kapler. No. He would not want to fight against Gabe. But I, I pulled up some statistics, did a little bit of hard math. Um, 14 years out of his 22 as a manager with 86 plus wins. One league pennant. That's terrible. Like, especially after you built so much over a season. His first season with the Giants, he, what did he, was, I mean, he was given, like, a stacked team to begin with, but I think he, they won 103. That's, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but that's mini. Yeah. I, I, it's really interesting because I think, like, there's a lot of teams that could deal, that could at least use that kind of leadership to build. But he's never going to get a job. No. I feel like 16 of the current managers are in their first manager position. It's like everyone's hiring. Young guys. Yeah. It's Which, a shame. Yeah. It's interesting. I think it's just a, an interesting thing. Um, Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it is at the um, end of the season, too. And then uh, Roy Holiday. Sad news. He died this morning, right? Today at some point. Yeah. Plane crash. Flying a... We're recording on Tuesday, November 7th. Flying a, a plane close to the Gulf of Mexico. He was 40 years old. Two-time Cy Young winner. Threw a perfect game. Threw a postseason no-hitter. Sucks. Doc. Poor Doc. Yeah, that sucks. It, I, you always hate to see guys go like that. Especially cool people. Yeah, he's a totally down earth guy. Uh, Grayson, I don't know about you, but I think JT looks a little tired. You want to give him a quick break? <laughs> Sir. Are you talking NBA here? Yeah, we're talking NBA. It's definitely a break for me. Sit back, relax, and enjoy learning nothing. I'll enjoy the show. You observe nothing, do you? Get to hear all about Golden State and Lonzo Ball. Get out. Those are the only two basketball terms he knows. Kevin Durant. He must have picked that up on the way over. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> Let's talk about the East. I think the East is way more interesting than the West. Hot take. What do you think, Grayson? Mm, maybe. There's stuff going on in the East. There's a little bit of... I feel like that mid... Like, those bottom four? Yeah, we'll go ahead and say... F no, not four. I meant uh, five. Uh, playoff seed spots. The rankings. So it's like, what? Four through eight? Those are all interesting. Cleveland's not one of them. Yeah, exactly. What is Cleveland right now? Jeez like Louise, 13. they're number 13. Yeah, they're 4 and 6. How are they so bad? Imagine you, at the beginning of the season, you, at the beginning, at the end of the last season, season just, just before, before like, like the, the final, final say, season. you had told anyone watching basketball that the Cleveland Cavaliers would be one seed ahead of the Bulls in like, what is the third week? Yeah, I mean, 10 games in. That's not... JT could probably believe you. Yeah, JT, JT could, could believe me. <laughs> but, I mean, they still have 72 <laughs> games to play. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's they've still got many, but it's, like, kind of embarrassing. At this point, yeah. Um, Yeah, but uh, and currently in that 4 through 8 are the Wizards, the Raptors, the Knicks, the 76ers, the Hornets, and the Pace, or No, just the Hornets. Sorry, no Pacers. What teams do you see coming into that fold and what teams do you see coming out because I don't know if I see the Knicks or the Hornets sticking yeah, around for too much longer. I don't buy the Hornets just yet. Yeah, I'm not I'm not in. I believe the 76ers could make it. Yeah. 6, 7, or 8. That seems like about time for them. 
Um, I, I think, think the, the Bucks, Bucks when they just picked up who? Eric Bledsoe. This morning. That's not small. I mean, they're they're already pretty decent, and they just added a a real talent. Yeah, they got Giannis Antetokounmpo to their bench. Bledsoe, he's getting benched. Hot take. No, but um, I think the Bucks are going to continue to uh, improve and uh, yeah. get better standing. Because what? I mean, it's it's at that point of the season when the the Bucks are four and five, and then the number eight seed are five and five. Mm. It's close, and teams are still finding themselves again, except for the Cavaliers. They're not making the playoffs. Hot take. Hot take. This this is our hot take night. Um, but I just I I don't know. The Hornets are fascinating me, but uh, that number one seed might be more interesting. I thought the Celtics were going to have a much tougher time after losing Hayward. Yeah, they've won nine in a row. They lost the first two. Won nine. No no other team right now has a winning streak that, that is that um good. And then the Pistons at number two. I don't think. I would have said that like Mm-mm. three or four weeks ago. There's no way. No. It's surprising. They have a good backcourt though. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. And the Magic at number three. Crazy. Yeah, it's, that's weird. I I need I need two more months to figure this out. No, yeah. not two more. Maybe one more. But it's um you know it's interesting. Uh, let's move on over the West. The Rockets. I make sense to me. They're at number one. Followed by Golden State. Also makes sense to me. The Timberwolves at number three. That makes sense to me. That makes sense, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Minnesota has a really good team. A really good team. Number four, Grizzlies. Number five, Trailblazers. Uh, both ahead of the Spurs, which I think is interesting. Kawhi Leonard still out. Much yeah, I know. Be fine. I, 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 like, I like the Spurs. I do too. I like the coach. They're cool. Who's their coach? Greg. I'm kidding. Pop a bitch. <laughs> My boy. How can you forget old Pop? Um, and then the Clippers at number six, six, seven, seven, seven. I'm learning how to speak again. And the Jazz at number eight. Could you see anyone else coming in uh, to that final four? Because I know there's a few teams that I could think of. I'm still waiting for Oklahoma City to kind of find themselves offensively. Because defensively, they're one of the best teams in the league. Like looking at point differential... Points allowed, field goal percentage allowed. They're really strong. They're just struggling offensively, which hopefully will come. So I think that's a team to look out for going forward. Um, yeah, they're keeping those scores pretty low. They really are. Yeah, I think I think the Thunder, um, they should be higher than they are right now. Um, the one I, thing that is concerning about the Thunder, what, they're what, 4-5? and five? Yeah. They are 4-0 when Westbrook gets a triple-double. And 0 and 5 when he doesn't get a triple double, and I didn't think I'd be going through this again with the newly acquired yeah, players. You you can't rely on one player. You just can't do it. I mean, his usage rate is down, which is good, but yeah, I mean, and then just ahead of the Thunder are the Denver. Lakers. And Denver's the Denver. at 11. I think Denver. No, they, Denver's at 10. Denver's at 11. What are you looking at? Oh, they have the they have the same record. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I think Denver. I like. I think their team's too good. They might make they're a potential playoff team. I think uh, the West is just so stacked. Like the Clippers are now a seven seed. Also, I'm just gonna take a second. The divisions bother me. They don't mean anything. Though. They don't mean anything. What is this East and West nonsense? How was New Orleans in the West? Are you talking about conference or division? Conference, sorry. Well, of course, division doesn't mean anything. You never hear about that. And the Detroit's in the East. Oh, this makes me mad. I'm a geography major. I want maps to look good. But, um, yeah, I, I think uh, those standings making are interesting. Um, but I think Bledsoe going to the Bucks. I think that's going to make the Bucks a lot stronger. It'll put them in a better position to maybe jump into the playoffs. Yeah. And then Boston. Interesting. They're doing really mm-hmm. well. I they they're they're playing consistently well, which is scary. Yeah. Nine games in a row. Nine. I mean, I would love don't get me wrong, I would love to see any team any either team, not the Warriors or the Cavaliers, and they make the finals. 
But do I want that to be Boston? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. Wouldn't go that far. Oh, boy. Um, you know what? I'm getting tired of hearing you speak. You want to bring uh, JT back in the, the fold? Get back in here. Lean forward. I'm back. He's back, baby. He'll be back. He was taking a nap. What do you we think? Throw stuff what out. do you think about the Bledsoe trade? Mm-hmm. Who? Eric Bledsoe. Is that a person? That's your, that's your uncle. That's a point guard. They um they actually sit right in front of the scorekeeper's desk, and then they just make sure nobody oh, gotcha. interferes with yeah, uh, them coming towards. No, no balls can hit the scorekeeper's table. No players can run into the table. Refs can't get too close. Or He's else, one of the uh, best in the game. That's a technical. Lockdown. I learned something new about that. He's a lockdown point guard. Every day I'm here. Man, the Redskins did pretty well this, this past weekend, didn't they? Yeah, they beat Seattle in Seattle, which makes it's you impressive. question how good we thought Seattle actually was. I don't question it. I think it was a fluke. Do you? Yes, I think it was. It wasn't. You know, every team is going to win that, and everybody says it, so it's not a quote-unquote hot take. But every team is going to win the those games they shouldn't win, and every team is going to lose those games they should win. That makes sense? Yes. I wish that English. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think in for that, uh, Seattle is the Redskins um, at home, the most intimidating stadium to play at. Arguably. But they still, Seattle, they still have some tough games coming up. What, what's a what, let's let's take a look let's take a look in a book reading rainbow if Arizona Thursday oh yeah that's the, that's gonna be a real nail biter this that's gonna be an offensive shootout Carson Palmer's backup <laughs> whoever that is Drew Stanton yep oh poor car poor Cardinal Sands they must have a rough life they do have a rough life so let's see okay so. They have mm. the Cardinals yeah. up next, and then the Falcons and that's the 49ers. Not tough. That's not tough. That's not tough. But then Philadelphia. That's uh, that's tough. That's very tough. Jacksonville. That's, that's a primetime game. Jacksonville. Jacksonville? At Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of tough. And then they have Could to play tough. the Rams. They have really good defense. Yeah, they're the best defense in the league. And then they have to play the Rams. That's tough. And the Cowboys. It's also that's tough. tough. And then they play the Cardinals again to finish off that terribly hard schedule with a, another nail-biter. So, yeah, I mean, teams like Atlanta... Which, right now, they're not doing too well. No. There's, st- there's, st- there's still talent there, for sure. Philadelphia, Jacksonville, Los Angeles, Dallas, and a row. Mm. Jacksonville's defense scares me. I'm yeah. so glad I have them. I mean, Philadelphia has a good defense. Jacksonville has a good defense. Dallas's defense isn't awful. And the Rams' offense is just awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 they're always a team I like to watch on Sundays because I always like to see what they do. and uh, Or Thursdays or Mondays on the rare occasion, as of this Thursday. I'll be watching them on a Thursday. Yep. Unless I go to bed early. Then I will not be watching them on a Thursday. What can you do? Hot take. Go to bed before 8 o'clock? Me? Yeah. He's an old man. (laughs) Regularly. I go to bed before 8 o'clock. Like, it's 8.19 right now when we're recording this, and I'm already getting woozy. I'm just thinking about how soft my pillow is. (laughs) Well, it's it's 9.19 real time. True. This is fake time we're in right now. (laughs) <laughs> it is this isn't what God wanted it's just what like lazy people wanted yeah <laughs> give me an extra I hour. like the darkness I don't know what you're talking about well I like the morning brightness I'm, I'm, I'm an early I riser I hate that you know in Ireland uh, gets uh, in the summer it comes. the sun comes up at like 4am hey maps major yes. calm down I've just been there <laughs> I saw it I woke up after quite a night and then I uh, was like oh my god it must be like 10 a.m. nah it's 4 and the sun hurts my head back to sports back to sports the important stuff no one cares about Ireland what are you talking about except football except the British football what else what other games happened last uh, week uh, the Cowboys and the Chiefs yeah Cowboys won that game that was a great game that was really a, oh wait no sorry I was confusing the Redskins and the Seahawks with that one yeah no no that was not very that was pretty boring Chiefs should have won. They didn't. Or should they have? Not too happy about it. Um, I I don't think anyone likes the Cowboys. Uh, besides, I don't think Tony Tony Romo even likes the Cowboys anymore. Yeah, he's glad to be gone. He's not obligated like them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys watch. Did you guys watch that game? Yeah. No. The end of the first half was pretty cool. 
Tyreek Hill had that touchdown. Yes, that was awesome, especially for my fantasy roster. But Tony Romo, that was the first time he'd announced a game in Dallas. That was kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. I like Tony I like Tony Romo, the announcer. What's not to like about him? He's not a quarterback. Yeah, that's something to really like about him. <laughs> I think he's fun. He'll find I, a I don't, way I don't, to like, choke. He'll like, miss a call in the playoffs. He'll find a way to choke in the playoffs. Tony Romo. He'll break announcer. a collarbone in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I saw something funny. <laughs> I saw something funny today. It's like, Tony Romo find, finally made a, found a way to make it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Picked up the best job. He still may not even get that gig. <laughs> I think he'll get that gig. Um, maybe he's got to put in the hours. But uh, the Cowboys, Chiefs, the uh, Chiefs should have won. The Cowboys won. I think that's an embarrassment to the Chiefs. Um, they lost three of the last four games. Yeah, that's not good. Kind of falling off. Yeah, they they lost their momentum for sure. And Alex Smith, oh my goodness, threw a pick. He threw a pick. His first of the season. The impossible has happened. I was like really disappointed. Yeah, especially since it was against Dallas. Yeah, against Dallas. Oh, jeez, Louise. Um, poor Texans. That sucks. It sucks because oh, poor Deshaun Watson too. Such a talent. First year, he was doing so well. To be fair, though, they just got a World Series though. So yeah, they, <laughs> God, don't be too greedy. They can't have it all. Houston, <laughs> step down. One one. One it's league not, at a time. It's not like you just got hurt by one of the, like, a terrible, terrible natural disaster and your city could really use the morale in more than one sport. You're selfish. <laughs> Baseball is America's pastime. Signed, Grayson McKinney. That was Grayson's letter to Houston. Dated 11-7-2017. Just wait till Brett Hunt hears this. He's going to be furious. Bring it, Brett. <laughs> hey, I challenge you to a quarterback off. I bet I'll win. Don't play with fire. <laughs> that's uh, that's this uh, show's new tagline. Bring it, Brett. <laughs>